This is an ABC News Live special. Right now, live across the country, something that's never been done on ABC News before, we celebrate joy, love, freedom, and pride. Looking to the future while remembering the past. This banner represents the connection. It represents our family as a community. These tragedies that have connected these people to the people here in Colorado Springs. Hearing from those who finally can express their true self. There's no debate to trans people's existence. Full stop. And from those who continue to fight for rights. We have never seen anything as unprecedented as a crisis that we're in right now. Plus, we take you to a space that's fast becoming the place to be for some in the LGBTQ plus community. People who've literally grabbed me by the shoulders and with tears in their eyes thanked me. They never could envision having a space like this. Join us in New York City down Fifth Avenue past the historic Stonewall Inn to Chicago through Wrigleyville on the north side and out west right through the heart of San Francisco. Celebrating pride across America. Here now in New York City, Eva Pilgrim, Gio Benitez, LZ Granderson, and our special co host, Murray Hill. And welcome to ABC News Live's Pride Across America, the loudest and proudest streaming event on the air right now, honoring the LGBTQ plus community. I'm Gio Benitez. It is so good to be here with you. So good to be with all of you. I'm Eva Pilgrim. We are celebrating from coast to coast, covering the nation's three biggest pride marches in one place for the first time. And I'm Elsie Granderson. We have five full hours of live events, bringing the festivities from across the country to you. And here to help us with all of that, is our special co-host, Murray Hill, host of Hulu's Drag Me to Dinner. Murray, thank you so much for joining us. How are you feeling? <laughs> I am full of pride and joy. I'm happy to be here. We are standing by as the crowds of pride marchers prepare to hit the streets. In New York City, the parade is getting underway soon in Chelsea, here in Manhattan. Among the Grand Marshals, the amazing actor and singer Billy Porter and model and activist Yasmeen Benoit and legendary Arthur Randy Wicker. We will also take you live to Chicago, where in just two hours from now, Pride Marchers, including boys from North Halstead and beyond and ladies from Lakeview to Lincoln Park, everybody will party their way through the north side of the city. And then the grand finale, of course, in San Francisco, where the flags are already flying ahead of the march there. Thousands set to travel along Market Street to Civic Center Plaza, the city's pride theme this year, looking back and moving forward. An important reminder of what started all of this, the Stonewall Riots of 1969, when New York City police raided Stonewall Inn and patrons of the gay club and allies in the neighborhood took a stand against them. Today's parade route here in New York, passing by the Stonewall National Monument, just across the street from where the Stonewall Inn still serves as a pillar of the community. And as we move forward, we show our strength together, united in our pride and love for one another. So let's go ahead and check in now on the preparations in Chicago. That's where we find ABC's Ginger Z and Alex Perez standing by as pride festivities ramp up in the Windy City. Ginger and Alex, so good to see you. I love what you're wearing. Look at you, colorful. Hey, yes. we are feeling the spirit, Ginger, uh, Ginger and T.O.U. in New York. We are happy. We're excited. Yeah, we are. This is a reunion. Can I give you a little hug? Um, we're friends for about two decades. Two decades. We realized this morning that we didn't even have to coordinate. It's just like our brains at this point work with telepathy, especially when it comes to pride in Chicago. This is one of my favorite places. I lived here for five years. I lived just around the corner, and I lived right down there. Right here. In yeah. the neighborhood where pride takes over, and I know this isn't a competition. Competition, but I'm just gonna say it straight out. Chicago's got the best pride parade. I mean, if it is a competition, you're right. We do have the best pride parade. And what I love about the pride parade here and in other places, uh, Ginger and everyone, is just that 
when you come to this parade, you sort of forget about all of those problems that are happening around the world, and you have those moments of happiness, pure joy. I remember my first Pride Parade, Ginger. I actually wasn't even out of the closet just wow. yet, and I came here. I wandered up here to this part of town to see what it was like, and I remember seeing everyone, and for the first time in my life, in my early 20s, mm -hmm. thinking, I don't have to feel ashamed of who I am. You I can see all this, included. I can be around these people, and I can feel included. It is so beautiful. This was definitely the first Pride Parade I ever attended, and so to be back here, and you and I have even done the parade together before a couple of times, and so thinking about even that long ago, what Pride felt like and how much it's grown as an ally, I am just, you know, it is such a glorious day. And, of course, we got some good weather, at of least course. to start. Of course, we had some <laughs> rain overnight, but you got rid of all that, you cleared the way. See you later, Rain, it's time for rainbows. There we go. <laughs> All right. I love that this is a sort of reunion for you both, a pride reunion. Ginger Z, Alex Perez, thank you so much. We will be checking in with you very often throughout the broadcast here. Yes. Let's head out now to San Francisco, where the celebration is set to begin in just a few hours. But our own Devin Dwyer and Christiane Cordero of our incredible station, ABC7, Los Angeles, KABC-TV, they are standing by. Good morning to you guys. Wait, look at those chairs. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, look at this. They, they brought the thrones out. Welcome to our living room. We yes. wanted to go for something subtle, so. We're very excited. Guys, this here is my first are. time at San Francisco Pride. I'm so happy to be here yes. with Christian. You know, this city has been a beacon of hope and resilience all around the world for LGBTQ people. For 50 years, for 50 this years. parade is always a blockbuster. Today, they're expecting a million people out here in the streets. Uh, it's going to be quite something. And I got to tell you, the theme, Eva, this year, you mentioned it earlier, looking back, moving forward, really a nod to the meeting of pride, it you know, really celebrating the progress, looking for inspiration from those who came before, and also facing the challenges, and there are some big challenges ahead for the community. That continue for the community. You know, we joke about the rainbow colors, but the most iconic symbol of the LGBTQ plus community is the rainbow flag, and it was born right here in San Francisco in 1978. Artist and activist Gilbert Baker brought a single flag that uh, is a variation of this, and so here we are all these years later to stand on these streets is literally to be standing on the shoulders of giants. The birthplace of the flag. I learned something new today, guys. It's pretty exciting, and we've got lots of rainbow for you here in San Francisco. The parade uh, going to get started here in just a couple hours. Devin and Christian, thank you so much. I'm sure we're going to be seeing lots of them, but also lots of rainbows today. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And pride across America is just getting started here. And when we come back, we meet a symbol of resilience, a trans woman moving forward after the Pulse and Club Q tragedies impacted her personally. Here is a live look right now at the march here in New York City. It's going to kick off in less than an hour. But first, I'm going to pass the mic to Murray's Drag Me to Dinner co-stars, Neil Patrick Harris and David Burka. Hey, I'm Neil Patrick Harris. And I'm David Burka. And we are from Drag, Drag Me, Me to, to Dinner. Dinner. Pride never stops means that it's not something you think about one month a year. Be proud of who you are, of what you represent, all the time, in your whole life. How do we make sure that Pride never stops? See, I wear d rainbow shirts. Yes, you do. And... I make TV shows like Drag Me to Dinner. Yeah. Boom. The place that I blossomed and discovered a community was in Ann Arbor, Michigan. It was, like, mind-blowing as a 19-year-old to see that. That, oh, man, this is my community. Pride never stops. Happy Pride! Happy Pride. Whenever news breaks. The crush of families here in Poland. Here in Kentucky, no match for the tornado. From Monterey Park, California, on the ground in Ukraine. Reporting from Uvalde, Texas. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. From Kathmandu, Nepal. In Truckee, California, covering record snowfall. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. Here at this airport in Tampa, it's already shut down. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Reporting from Jerusalem. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news.
Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? <laughs> Can I hug you? Yeah. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. And welcome back to Pride Across America, the biggest streaming event celebrating the LGBTQ plus community. And we are counting down for the march to begin here in New York City just minutes from now. We're also waiting for the nation's other two biggest marches to kick off in the coming hours. Yes, it's going to be a lot of fun today. The clock is ticking to the start of the party on the north side of Chicago, going strong one week after the city's Pride Fest in Boys Town. All right, and we're keeping a close watch on our friends in San Francisco, marching just about a half hour after that. But first, we have to reflect on the moment that we are now here for. Decades after that infamous police raid at the Stonewall Inn, a gay bar not too far from here, the police are now protecting us as we celebrate with pride. But the attacks have not stopped. From the horrific Pulse nightclub shooting that left 49 dead and 53 wounded just seven years ago, to the senseless murders committed just last year at the Club Q in Colorado Springs that left five dead and 25 wounded, we will never forget the lives lost. Tira Kelly truly can't. Pulse was once her home bar, and she worked at Club Q when that tragedy occurred. Yet she continues to move forward and is another symbol of the strength in the community. When Pulse happened, it was a shock. It was the home bar. It happened once, and you'd think to yourself, thank God you made it through that, we lived through that, it's good. That could never happen again. There's no way that would ever happen again. And then you move across the country to a whole nother state, and the one club that I get hired at, it was almost deja vu like Club Pulse again. Like, seriously, again, I was numb at Club Q, and with Pulse, I was shocked. This banner represents the connection. It represents our family as a community, because this banner comes from thousands of miles away, and it's a tragedy. It's these tragedies that have connected these people to the people here in Colorado Springs. My friends and our patrons are the people who came and watched our shows and enjoyed us in our community were murdered in this building behind me and it's hard to just know that this is something that happens in america it doesn't feel safe anywhere particularly as a black trans woman so i don't feel safe anywhere except for my safe spaces except for the places that i know that i can be with people and around people that are going to love and care for me I was born in Detroit, Michigan. My father is a pastor. My mother was an evangelist. Following in the footsteps of my parents, I ended up going to Atlanta Christian College. I decided at that time to detransition because I didn't know what it was gonna be like going to a Christian college as a transgender woman, a black transgender woman. And when I detransitioned, I felt like that was when I was wearing a costume. I felt like that's when I was not being authentically myself. When you let go of that voice and accept that this is who you are, there's something beautiful that happens. I remember going to a drag show in Orlando. There was one transgender woman that was there. She was the first time I'd ever seen a transgender woman like amongst these drag queens. It was amazing. Oh, 
else was that bar that you know you got to go to and you're gonna see your friends and it's gonna be like you guys are having a family reunion. I had picked up my phone and there was a text message from my friend Jeremy and he said, did you make it to Pulse? If so, run. There were so many questions, but the main one was like, how many of the people that we know are in there right now or were in there and they were screaming and yelling and it was a lot, it was a lot. I quit for quite a while. I quit drag for quite a while. I didn't start back doing drag drag until I moved here to Colorado. I remember the vibe in the building that night was just so off. There was just something not right. The next day, I do dialysis treatments. Right after treatment, I ended up getting extremely sick. I fell asleep and I woke up to a phone call. It was my friend saying, hey, are you there? Are you okay? And it was almost deja vu like Club Pulse. And that's when they've told me about Derek. And then we found out about Daniel shortly after. Today, I go through some serious depressions. Everywhere I go, I'm like, this could be the night. I barely missed two times in a row. This could be that time. That's our safe space. And that's why it's such a violation when events like Pulse and Club Q happen because you've literally invaded the safe space that we have. There are so many voices that are telling our youth that they're wrong and that they can't be who they are. That's the voices that they hear every single day. I encourage the older people like myself to try to continue to uplift and encourage the youth. Otherwise, the only voices they're hearing are the voices of hate. It can be very difficult to believe that you are loved and accepted when that's not what you're hearing on a daily basis. Welcome to the very first ever Life's a Drag Pride pageant. My name is Leatrose Latrice. I met Tiara two months before the tragedy because she was going to be a new producer. Tiara spoke to me and she told me how pretty she thought I was and that's something you don't hear out here a lot. So then I started competing in her competition. We gained a relationship just off of what is it like to be a black older trans woman because a lot of black trans people do not make it. Our relationship became more than just like mentor, mentee. It was more like I was her actual child. It's an honor to see her because again, you don't see people like us. And even when you do see people like us, they're silent. So Tierra being a forefront in this is kind of giving young adults, children, and future kind of a message that if you just take that one little leap, it doesn't have to be a big thing, but show that you're accountable for actions and show that you support, it can make changes. When it comes to performing, I'm a person who loves to perform for the youth. What happens when there's a kid who is like, I've never seen somebody who looks like me, I've never seen somebody who supports me, and here you are. Can I just have a moment to talk? And that could change a kid's life immensely. Because of my health condition, there's often times that I'm like, I want to stop, I want to quit. But the reality is that I believe what's keeping me healthy and alive and in tune with myself is drag. It saved my life. Every time I get up on stage, I'm a completely different person. I'm not in any kind of pain. And it brings joy to people, and that's the most important part to me. It makes you feel like you have a purpose. It really makes you feel like you have a purpose. My goal is to never just talk the talk, but to always walk the walk. Slowly but surely, I see changes. We can start with changing the rhetoric that is behind drag and changing these ideals that drag queens are trying to hurt people or hurt children particularly. These type of people who did this at Pulse and at Club Q. And they would love to see that their destruction has ruined lives. That's what they want to see. But I believe that once we get past that point and get to that point of healing, then we are winning at that point. We're not letting hate win, but love always wins, you know?
just so powerful there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and the fact that you know, to be connected to two tragedies in such a way is just so, so powerful. And I'm so glad that they found each other and have this family of choice to support one another. And this Pride Month, uh, parents are opening up about their experiences with their children coming out. They say their hope is to help other parents know the best way to be supportive. ABC's Becky Worley spoke with some of those parents who are on their journey with their children and what they've learned along the way. If you're a parent whose child comes out to you, it can be scary, both from recent controversies and the parents' own experience of kids who were gay when they were teenagers. When you were growing up, what was it like to be a gay kid? I actually can't think of one friend or one person in our school who was openly gay. And there was an incident I remember that was um, a child, a high school that was being hazed. I just feel like they would never have been accepted or fit in. I think that's the fear for us as parents. My child's gonna be alone. I was scared to death, quite honestly. Still scared. So all of my family immigrated from Iran. They were not open at all. Their kids and a few others gathered inside the theater at the Harker School in San Jose, California. And as they talked, a different picture started to emerge. With the amount of acceptance we have in young people, there's not really as much of a stigma around being queer and open about it. In many parts of the country, it's not as hard as it used to be for kids to be different. I find myself looking forward to going to school. So that kind of is just putting a pep in my step for getting to that point in my life. It's just become much more normalized. Harvard professor Shafia Zaloum says the legalization of gay marriage and the creation of online communities for the LGBTQ plus population means kids aren't as isolated. There is that negativity that does exist and at the same time there are also a lot of different spaces in which kids are affirmed. This idea of sexuality is fluid, is more normalized and really a part of sort of the social landscape that kids are navigating where kids can actually seek out and find acceptance in different communities. And that mixed bag mirrors what the kids said. It's a battle with progress. We're getting recognized more, but we're also getting persecuted more. Like in Ryan's school district, they had a pride prom where queer kids from different schools gathered for their own dance. And it was one of the best nights of my life when I went. And for these parents who are already on the journey with their kids, it's not as scary as it was when they started out. I get daily educated more and more about gender identity from my kid, and uh, it's amazing. I think the biggest thing that I have realized in this journey is that my child is still my child. His character has not changed. Now I've kind of changed my ways of seeing our kids, both of our kids, and it's more like as long as they're happy, we're happy. The one thing I know from talking to some of your parents, all of them expressed their love and acceptance of you, and so I hope you feel that. And that's what it's all about, right? Parents being, you're a father too. Yes, sir. I mean, parents being supportive and you, you're an ally. You yes. are a very strong ally, my <laughs> friend. And you're a mother now. So that is really what's so important when you have these really supportive parents helping you along the way, right? A reminder of just how powerful love is, for yeah. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and shout out to my mama for never giving me any grief for coming out. <laughs> she had no choice. <laughs> oh, she had a choice. I'm out, I'm out, you're here, there you are. <laughs> when we come back, today is a celebration but it comes while some are declaring a state of emergency in the LGBTQ plus community. We'll explain. The countdown to the beginning of the march here in New York is getting closer. Here it comes. There it is, 36 minutes. Freedom, liberation, love, support, and Pride just means me. <laughs> You're watching Pride Across America with ABC News Live.
This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from Atlanta, I'm Steve Osinsami. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Pride means to me all the progress that we've made throughout all the years. Pride means to me fighting for our rights. Pride means to me being who you are to everybody and not caring what anybody thinks about it. Pride means hope. Oh, I love that. I love all of that. Welcome back to Pride <laughs> Across America. We are here in New York. It is Counting down to when the Pride Parade kicks off here. What do we got? Half an hour? Half an hour? About I think half so. hour. Look at all the people already lined up. It all is the amazing. rainbow flags. Everybody's ready. Everybody's yes. ready here. This march is a celebration. This comes as state houses from coast to coast have passed several laws targeting the community. And for more on that, let's head back out west to our friends Devin Dwyer and KABC reporter Christian Cordero. Good afternoon to you guys. Hey guys, you know, it is so great to be in San Francisco. This is my first San Francisco Pride. This place is such an iconic uh, city for the gay rights movement. In a really critical moment, uh, it's as important as ever. It really is, and we are. We're so happy to be here, not only to celebrate, but also pay tribute to the queeros of this city. From Harvey Milk and Harry Britt to Phyllis Lyon and Del Martin, and so many more, this city knows the triumphs and pain firsthand, that the battle for equal rights isn't an easy one, and that could not be more true uh, as pride celebrations have been overshadowed by what LGBTQ plus advocates are calling an onslaught of political attacks. Yeah, it really is a pall hanging over the celebrations this year. We've been talking to members of the LGBT community here in San Francisco. Uh, and they're concerned both about the discriminatory rhetoric that we are seeing out there right now on the campaign trail and also a wave of new anti-LGBTQ state laws. One of the nation's leading advocacy groups has gone so far as to declare a state of emergency for the community for the first time in its 40-year history. And here now is a look at the legal landscape taking shape and what it means for the community and the country. It's a season of celebrating progress toward equality, individuality, and love. Hanging over pride this year is growing concern about anti-LGBTQ violence, hate, and discrimination. 
have never seen anything as unprecedented as a crisis that we're in right now. Kelly Robinson, the first black woman president of the Human Rights Campaign, says the community is in a state of emergency. We have people showing up with weapons to drag queen story hours. Children's hospitals are getting bomb threats. I talked to families that are making the decision about leaving their state because they fear that their kids aren't safe there. So far this year, more than 500 anti-LGBTQ bills have been introduced in 42 states. 80 have become law. Nearly half of the bills explicitly target transgender people. For someone who is actively having their civil rights taking, you know, taken away from them, that's not a culture war, that's your life. Danica Rome in 2018 became the nation's first openly transgender state lawmaker. Regardless of whether you agree with my politics, my political ideology, the party I represent, how I wear my hair, wherever it is, what I do want people to know is that they can at least come up and talk to me, that they can at least have a conversation. This year in Virginia alone, Republicans have proposed a dozen anti-trans state bills, but all of them failed to become law so far. We're going to hold the line by winning our elections this fall. That's how you hold the line. Public opinion has shifted dramatically in favor of LGBTQ equality over the last decade. This year, Michigan and Pennsylvania joined more than 20 other states to make non-discrimination protections state law. And Minnesota became the 21st state to ban conversion therapy. In the military, transgender people now serve openly. The motion is adopted. <laughs> And Congress late last year enacted new protections for same-sex marriages. But many conservatives say the advances have gone too far. They were making huge progress, huge gains, without much pushback until it started to be aimed at kids, right? Kids in the classroom teaching them new things that parents uh, weren't really that supportive of. And I think that that's really what has created this movement. Less than 2% of Americans identify as transgender or non-binary. Far fewer are teenagers, yet some are Republicans have made them a top target, banning transgender student athletes, drag performances in public, discussion of gender identity and sexual orientation in classrooms, and gender affirming care for minors, even when their doctors and parents consent. They're having third graders declare pronouns. We're not doing the pronoun Olympics in Florida. Florida governor and presidential candidate Ron DeSantis has made the issues a focal point of the GOP presidential primary. I mean, the idea that we have biological boys playing in girls' sports, it is the women's issue of our time. I want to send a message to the entire community, especially to transgender children. You are loved. You are heard. You are understood and you belong. President Biden and top Democrats are vowing to defend LGBTQ rights, but legal experts say the patchwork of new state laws could take years to unwind. For trans Americans like Danica Rome, the answer is standing up and standing proud. You cannot serve your constituents by attacking them. And so I get to demonstrate what excellence in trans leadership looks like. You know, Dan Danica Rome is such a reminder that visibility matters. It's one way that all of us can make a difference, simply being ourselves and standing up. And, and that can take courage. And we should say, Christian, that all eight LGBTQ state uh, legislative candidates in the state of Virginia won their primaries last week. So representation for them on the ballot this fall. It's growing, right. When we talk about the legal landscape, it's really easy to kind of go to those 500 plus bills that have been at least introduced. But the Supreme Court also has LGBTQ plus rights on the table. That's right. Another major development this week in gay rights at the United States Supreme Court. The justices will decide whether some businesses can refuse to serve LGBTQ Americans on account of free speech. A big decision. That's my beat. We'll be watching it this week uh, back in Washington, so a lot to watch there. The party's just getting started out here, guys, in San Francisco. We know you'll be checking back with us in a bit, but for now, we'll toss it back to you in New York. We are joined now by Emmy-nominated actor, star, and Star of Pose and American Horror Story advocate of all human rights, Angelica Ross. Hi. Welcome and happy Pride. Happy Pride. It's so good to see you. It's wonderful to see you. It's been a while since Chicago. Right, yes. like 10 years at least? Absolutely. Wow. And, and the girl's heard. still looking good. Oh, well, you know, cocoa butter. <laughs> cocoa butter, shea butter, and love. Thank you. Yes. You two want me to leave? <laughs> no, I mean, hello. I mean, what's going on here? <laughs> we, we just go back. We go back. And when we come back, we will be in the Windy City or is it still windy? I don't know if that's even a thing. Our ginger sea will be bringing a special coast to coast pride forecast. Stay with us. And we speak with our friends at New York Station about WABC.
But be first, yes. we have to catch up. Yes, let's Because, catch up. as I said, it's been 10 years. Your career has just skyrocketed. What has it been like being such a beacon of hope and inspiration for so many children? Honestly, it is, I feel so timely. It feels timely because I just want to be a reflection to those out there to understand that you just need the fertile ground to blossom from. And if you're not on fertile ground, you can move. We can move to places and we can move to communities and neighborhoods where we are accepted. So to see people watch me make my way means everything because I hope that they know that as difficult as it is, you can make your way too. All right, and Angie, I gotta tell you, I'm gonna call you Angie because I feel like okay. I know you. I watched you on all three seasons. First of all, you know, I'm a middle-aged trans guy and watching you on TV, I'm gonna tell you, it gave me so much hope. Really? So it is, it is an honor to be here with uh, trans excellence like yourself. And if anybody out there is watching, that's what I look like naked. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, Angie, um, do you feel hopeful for the young kids coming up? I really do. Listen, I, the kids are all right. They are. I really do feel like some of them are teaching me the language. I'm learning from the youth like Raquel Willis. You know, I'm still learning from those folks. Plus- What are they teaching you? You're saying you're learning from them. What, what have they taught you? Well, we're learning language. And what I love about language is, is no one word will ever encapsulate our true essence. But whatever works for you, I think the more inclusive we can be. You know, when I came up, we didn't have all of these terms, but to understand not only that trans is an umbrella, and then when you think about it, like RuPaul's Drag Race, right? When we, the reality is all of the, all of the queens that compete are trans because trans is an umbrella term that covers trans women, trans men, as well as drag queens. And we need to know that we need to stand with each other and protect each other. What is it like witnessing all of the legislative attacks against the community in general, but trans people specifically? I think I'm watching one of the worst reality shows I have ever seen. <laughs> I'm like, the, I was just came back from Canada and I was on a plane with the actor from uh, this movie called Idiocracy. And I was just telling him how it has become reality. But what I do know is everyone kind of sees the foolery that's going on. Those who are willing to participate in it, Judgment Day will come, and it, it just comes in the form of what it is. I don't have to say anything, but those who want to be a part of the higher ground, where we go to higher ground, like Mo Michelle Obama would say, where people are, everybody is valued and accepted. That's what we just need to focus on and let them do them. I love it. Yeah. And we absolutely love you doing oh, you. Thank you, thank you so, so much. much for, hey, I'm a, really about to do me in a minute because I'm about was, to perform my new single. I was going to say, um, is this just for us or is this for the crowd? No, no, no. We about to go back. We about to open up the show real quick. Ooh. Open it up. With? What's, what does purr mean? <laughs> purr. Is it like padami? <laughs> you should try it. Let's try it. In the camera. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta learn. I need some practice. <laughs> Maybe Barry's boot camp has a yes. class I can I get went with. to the Earth of Kids school, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck today. Thank you so much. Opening up. Can't wait to hear the song. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Download it on all platforms. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> now, when we come back, my girl Ginger, with all the all too important weather forecasts for things as we kick things off here in New York, please stay with us right across America. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news.
Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. I came out of jail with a plan. I was going to put every piece of energy I had into music. Give it up for Jelly Roll! If I wasn't a musician, I'd be dead. This was my best bet to really have an impact. <laughs> I'll cry with you. Who would have thought I could help people? I needed help, you know? I still need help. Somebody save me. I love you. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Hi, how cute. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Del Rio, and I'm from Hulu's brand new show, Drag Me to Dinner. To me, pride never stops being staying visible and being out there and being your authentic self. And also realizing that some challenges you may have in front of you right now, you can easily overcome. Stay true to it and keep fighting. Always give back to your community because the community was there for me in the very early years, many, many years ago. So always, always give back. My pride began in New Orleans. I mean, New Orleans is a fun party town. We also love costumes, fantasy, food, and drinks and the acceptance and the love was there. And I've been fortunate enough to live also in New York City for many years, where the pride got even bigger and bigger. Then Los Angeles, where it expanded even more. And now I'm currently in Palm Springs, where I'm reminding people that, hey, pride is everywhere. She looks fabulous. Welcome back. That was the one and only Bianca Del Rio, winner of Drag Race Season 6 and host of The Pit Stop. Bianca is leading ABC News Live partner Hulu's new Pride Never Stop Past the Mic campaign. And we know that across the country, people are celebrating Pride with their families or chosen families. And the initiative is aimed at ensuring that everyone has access to celebrate Pride no matter where they are. This year, Hulu is passing the mic to stars from Hulu shows, influencers, and allies, and community members to share how their pride never stops. Now, throughout this five-hour unprecedented production, you will see some of these messages because no matter where you are, you are not alone. And joining us now is the host of the new Hulu series, Drag Me to Dinner, Murray Hill. We are so glad to have you with us today. You have to tell us about this new show. You said 40 queens? There are 40 of the top drag queens in the country in the show. It is absolutely wild. And it's a competition show. The prize, well, it's not, it's kind of invaluable. <laughs> Which means it's cheap and there's no money involved. But, but they compete in throwing a dinner party and cooking and entertaining and preparing a cocktail menu and everything. So the great thing about this show, kids, is all the drag queens, it's all impromptu. It's fun, it's unscripted. And so that's you really your specialty, see. right? That like is my you specialty. are improv. Yeah, as you can tell, I'm making you all nervous. Like, <laughs> 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 how, how do you manage all of those huge personalities on one platform like that? Well, uh, let me tell you something. You know, I'm a huge personality. I actually felt like the straight guy with all of this. <laughs> <laughs> I put in uh, earplugs every once in a while just to take a break from the girls. <laughs> is this pretty much like the most exciting project you've done? It is the best project I've done, and um, it's the first time a guy like me has ever hosted a show. Well, there so, you go. You know, I, I got to say that on Gay Pride, so I'm so Neil Patrick Harris and David Burka and Hulu gave me the shot. And the show is, is fun, and it celebrates joy. You know, that's it. We're just having fun. There's no plot. There's no meaning. There's no prize. There's no point. It's I saw just some movies entertainment. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
y'all, I think it started behind us. I know, it really is. Like, that's the thing. We've been talking about pride never stops. I mean, this is starting early here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everyone is just car? so excited. This Who is, is in the car? Easy. That's true. Yeah. Who is in the car? This Tinted really out cool. windows. That might be Kamala Harris or Adele or Madonna. We're not sure. Waiting to hear from the yeah, control yeah. room. <laughs> <laughs> and you see the countdown right there. It officially starts in 15 minutes. Yeah. It's already yeah. well yeah. underway. So you can see that people started. Oh, they're announcing some of the names. Yeah. Yep. Very, very cool. All right, let's go to the weather here now, uh, because here in New York, it's nice and beautiful, but it could get a little dicey a little bit later. Thankfully, we're under a tent here. <laughs> so what can we expect? And what about in some of the other Pride celebrations across the country? Fortunately, the one and only Ginger Z has those answers about what's in store for Pride across America. Hey there, Ginger. Hey, Eva, Gio, everybody in New York. Yes, if you look east, and I know because of the tall buildings, you wouldn't be able to see it. There's a thunderstorm about three miles east of you, just over Brooklyn. So yes, it's gonna be a little dicey on your end. But here in Chicago, we had the storms overnight, and now just the breeze that's throwing my curls around. So let's go ahead and dive into what the forecast looks like. There will be scattered storms. If any parade has a shot at getting a storm, it's you all in New York. Uh, the temperature gonna be in the mid to upper 80s here. So we're steamy, and I mean, I look at people right now they're already fanning themselves on the sides of the street and this parade's not even close to started so it's going to be a long 12 hours or so i know the chicago and of course the new york parade go long and then in san francisco the most temperate by far they've had such a cool spring and early summer the temperature is sticking in the low 60s and they'll stay dry for most of it with a, a mix of sun and clouds but mostly cloudy skies overall so here we're going to just be taking it all in hey everybody hydrate S somebody heard me i'm not even joking Hydration is going to be key. And then you all, I'll be watching that radar closely and I'll keep you informed as to what happens in New York. Oh, okay, Ginger, <laughs> thank you so much. We're feeling the wind, right? Yes, oh, and Ginger's sorry. being the mama, making sure everyone's standing. I love it, I love it. <laughs> you know what, you two? The weather is not going to stop the queer community. Nothing will stop us. We're resilient. Rain, problems, anything. We're going to march no matter what. There you go. Yeah. Murray Hill said like, the best. I feel like the rain adds a little something. I know. It <laughs> makes it a little cooler, right? We need it. Hey, Pride Across America is just getting started here. And we, when we come back, the first openly trans woman to compete on America's next top model, Isis King, is going to join us here live. Plus more from the Pride March here in New York. Please do stay with us. This is Pride Across America on ABC News Live. at stake. So much on the line. More Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes! And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're gonna love it. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. We're honored. ABC's 2020 winner of three Emmy Awards for Excellence. Thank you for making 2020 Friday night's most watched and most honored news magazine. You never know what you're going to get on this show. That's all I'm going to tell you. Yes, Whoopi! This mic on? Can you hear me out there? Behind the scenes is always a better show. Absolutely. Always. Absolutely. That's what people don't see during the commercial break. Right. They don't. What happened? I had no idea really what I was getting myself into. That day that we walked out, I, I treasured that day. I just, I couldn't sit there. You're doing good, Joy. You're doing good. Oh, yeah, baby. It was crazy. Behind the table. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.
classics like Balanchine and move to the future like Billie Jean. Welcome back. She was the first openly trans woman to compete in America's Next Top Model, and she's now making history again, playing a non-binary oncologist on the Prime Video Show with Love. Isis King, welcome Hi. to Pride. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here. We're dancing right now. You can't hear what oh. we're listening to, but it is definitely a party. Let me ask you something. What is it like seeing yourself in so many prominent places, including the show Sea of Love? Uh, to be on with love and to be seen in this way, you know, to show a trans person be loved on by their family, friends, and, and a partner, it's just a beautiful experience. Um, our show creator, Gloria, did a really good job at really cultivating these amazing people and, and making us feel seen on camera, so in front of the camera and behind the camera. How is she helping you be seen behind the camera? Say it again? How are you being seen behind the camera that's so uplifting? Yeah, well... She really wanted to know who we were, and like we're also all close. So just really getting to know each other, and also like helping to mold the stories a little bit more by by getting non-binary writers as well, and um, curating diverse writers behind the scenes to just see what we like also and how we feel about certain things to just make sure the characters were super authentic, especially for a trans character. When did you personally start to feel the power in your voice to be able to go from? identifying who you are to where you are today in pop culture. Say it again, I'm sorry. Oh, it's totally okay. <laughs> How has your own personal journey has been? I know they're so loud yeah. and partying behind us. <laughs> Not mad at it at all. Uh, so how has it been for you, your personal journey, yeah. going from somewhat voiceless to having this platform and being able to be able to speak for so many? Uh, it's it's really good, you know. Um, I've been doing this for a long time, like 15, 16 years, so to continue to, to be on this journey and to help people along the way, um, it feels special. I, I get to continue to find new ways to express my art and to help open doors for people and to help the community um, feel more seen along the way. Any projects you can share with us that you're developing? Well, we are on a strike right now, writer strike, so pay writers. Pay writers. It's really important to pay writers. Um, but. You know, I have some things I'm working on right now, and, and also just being out here for Pride, and I'm going to Essence Fest this weekend Fantastic. for a panel, so I'm excited. It's my first time going to Essence Fest, so I'm really excited to just keep going with the flow. I like to just go with the flow and to see where I came from, from just saying yes and being a background extra on Top Model to, you know, getting to, to have this series regular role and to continue to just share my journey with the world. Um, it's, an, it's been amazing so far, and I'm so blessed. I love the fact that you're at Essence Fest because it doesn't separate your identity, correct? Yes, exactly. And as a queer black man myself, fighting to make sure that my full self can be in spaces has been difficult. When you yes. got to know about Essence Fest, what did you think? I, I'm so excited. You know, I love Essence in general, and I've always wanted to go. You know, I remember Girls Trip. Uh, I mean, I know right, I'm going right? to have that type of experience. <laughs> I'm going to work, but... I'm just so excited to be in community with so many beautiful black women and um, to just share my journey as a uh, black trans woman. Advice to the young people who may be watching? Words of advice. Uh, is there a camera? Which, where, uh, don't give up. You know, um, this journey is a marathon, not a sprint. Take your time. I wish I would tell my younger self, like, just relax and go with the flow. Sometimes you want things to happen a certain way and at a certain time, and that's not life. So just enjoy the ride along the way and continue to make positive decisions so you won't regret anything while you do it. Any mentor that's, uh, that you think of as you're saying that that was very special in your life that helped you get to this place? Um, different people, you know, along the way. Uh, Ava DuVernay for giving me the, the chance to be on When They See Us. Um, uh, Tyra Banks, of course, for giving me, you know, that, that big start on Top Model. Um, Janice Danielle, uh, an amazing trans woman that got me my first uh, short film role that really put me in front of the camera as an actress and made me say, wow, I really want to do this. In an era where trans roles weren't really happening, mm -hmm. it really gave me the opportunity to see like, oh wow, I can do this. So shout out to all of those women and Absolutely. all the other women in my life that, that helped me be where I am now. You had advice for people who happen to be in the LGBTQ plus community. Yeah. Any words of advice about how to be a good ally? 
despite some of the names you've mentioned? Yeah, how to be a good ally. I would say to be a good ally, you need to just listen. You know, a lot of times people want to tell you what, what would be better for you or what you should do. And as an ally, you know, not having that experience, sometimes just asking just to be of service and to see what someone needs and also to just continue to do research. In our community, things constantly change, right? They, we're constantly evolving, changing new lingo, new, new words, new, new phrases, new everything. So just continue to listen and, and be open, have an open heart and, and protect us along the way. You know, Demi Lovato raised eyebrows recently, talking about how difficult it was getting people to understand. Yeah. What, is there like a little that you can share to kind of help people? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say, you know, I feel like a lot of people gave Demi heat for that, but you know, yes, it's, we're in a world where we constantly have to educate people, but it can be really taxing on people, especially when people constantly question your identity and who you are. So you just have to give queer people space to continue to grow and continue to also say, today might not be a day I feel like explaining every little detail, but that doesn't take away from my identity and who I am. Beautiful so words. Just listen and also allow us the space to continue to expand and grow because identity is not one single thing for most people. So, you know, just live your life and live let people life. live their lives. Absolutely. <laughs> it's that simple. Absolutely. Isis King, thank you so much for thank such you. wonderful, wonderful words and encouragement. Excuse me, I'm a little sweating up here. I got to, whoo. <laughs> I'm going to now pass the mic to Hulu's Drag Me to Dinner star, Nani Wu. Honey for Wu, sorry. <laughs> it's hot. Hi, I'm Hanifa Wood, and I'm from Hulu's Drag Me to Dinner. Pride never stops means respecting the culture, respecting the grind, respecting the creativity, respecting just the humanness of it all. The way that I show that pride never stops is I try my best to include everyone in everything that I am doing. I want to give a shout out to Washington, D.C. It is my hometown. I happen to be home with family, but we all went to the Ruth Bader Ginsburg Memorial. And what I noticed about my town and what I love, because this was right after the insurrection, I just saw all of these inclusive organizations and really it was like about love. So people are standing up for human rights. Pride isn't just for one month, it's year round. Um, not for the broadcast, no. But you've been out. Oh, no, All right, I and welcome back here. We're going to take you live to the New York Pride March uh, that is just getting started here. Three minutes officially, but it's really well underway here. Yeah, Happy we're getting the Pride. preview. Oh, my. Look at this. I mean, so many people are coming around. It's just so interesting to see how people dress up for this. They really go all out. I know. I, I think I should have worn heels. <laughs> there are heels out there. Oh, Blown away. I'm like, are you going far in those hills? <laughs> they're walking. They're walking the parade, and it's like that's a commitment. It really is. You've been in awe the entire time. Yes, Murray, you you're excited watching this. I'm excited because you know the politicians just rolled by, and this is the year that we need all the support from politicians. And I was excited to see our friend Chuck Schumer. <laughs> yeah, Chuck Schumer was just walking by as well, He's and we. Tall. He is tall, yes. Short. <laughs> a but lot of also, people are tall to you. But also people stopped to, like, see, oh, my God, it's yep, Mary Hill. <laughs> it is. All right, we'll be right back here on Pride Across America. It is just minutes away. The Pride March officially started. Woo! Happy Pride, everyone. We're back in a moment here on ABC News Live. <laughs> You never know what you're going to get on this show. That's all I'm going to tell you. Yes, Whoopi! This mic on? Can you hear me out there? Behind the scenes is always a better show. Absolutely. 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 That's what people don't see during the commercial break. Right. They don't. What happened? I had no idea really what I was getting myself into. That day that we walked out, I, I treasured that day. I just, I couldn't sit there. You're doing good, Joy. You're doing good. Oh, yeah, baby! It was crazy. Behind the Table. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television.
From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. You're along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. And welcome back to ABC News Live's Pride Across America extravaganza. The 2023 New York City Pride March is about to kick off in just seconds. We've been getting a little preview. Yes, we have. <laughs> and we are going to go ahead and look at that. You can see that live chopper cam from our station here, WABC-TV. You can see so many people on the streets of New York. It is very, very exciting here. And now we're going to go ahead and join WABC's program Emmy right Tony now Award winner, of the New York City Pride Award March. Award winner, Underwood. Billy Porter. And author, activist, gay rights historian, Randy Wicker. Plus live performances by Angelica Ross, Laura Morano, Brooke Eden, and a ballroom Vogue dance performance by House of Basquiat. And so a hello to you and a hello to all hello. of us, right? It's time. Let's get it started. I'm Sam Champion with all of our Channel 7 colleagues and friends. And actually, as long as we've known each other, it's really family, yes. right? Yes. Lauren Glassberg, Kimberly Richardson, all of us are so happy to once again be here with you to celebrate love and acceptance right here on the largest and most spectacular Pride celebration anywhere on Earth. Yeah, um, Sam, it is pretty spectacular, this celebration of ours. The official theme this year for the Pride March is strength and solidarity. And it's really a message that comes at a challenging time for the LGBTQIA plus community as legislation in many states is being aimed at curbing their rights. And it's also causing great concerns as there has been an increase in physical violence directly targeting trans and BIPOC individuals, not only in the USA, but really all around the world. Yeah, it's a global issue. And that's why today New York City Pride seeks to illuminate the good that can come and has been accomplished through uplifting and supporting one another. To quote Harvey Milk, you must be your authentic self. And what better way than to be out and proud at the Pride March? It's a mission set by the organization and the organizers of this march, the Heritage of Pride organization. Let's give them a big shout out for not only today's massive event, but for the many other Pride events they host this month and their program throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're going to quote anyone, let's quote Harvey Milk, because yes. I applaud that. Hey, yeah. let's give them some love in any way you can, whether it's on social media, how does that go? you got to like, you got to comment, you got to share. Hashtag, yeah. hashtag yes. it I all think you up. Know. Or, in, <laughs> or if you can, in another way to show your love and support, how about a donation, if you can do that? Heritage Pride is vital and important group of the LGBTQIA plus community. Yeah, your money's going to go a long way. And Sam, you know, I'm thinking, I'm pretty sure that if you threw in some Gardening, just Picks. something, a little something. Now, <laughs> your top off-wrap, yes. you might be uh, encouraging folks to dig a little Dur deeper into those couch cushions. Dirty just hands, saying. dirty just fingernails. Hey, the, the, the day is early, the event is early, the Ooh. march is early. The way we start may not be how we finish, <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? It is hot. Anything, it is hot. Anything can happen. Yeah. Speaking of the fountain of youth, which is what we're all trying to keep on to, joining us today is a co-host, Angelica Ross, an extraordinary woman whose talents extend from the boardroom to film, TV, music, Capitol Hill even. Since we saw her last, she has been busy. Uh, and she's leading the figure, she's a leading figure in the movement for human rights advocacy, focused on transgender and racial equality, a fan favorite of FX's award-winning hit, Pose. Yes. Then there's American Horror Story 1984, and our Pride co-host of the last yeah few years, right? Yep. So she's about to kick off the day with a show-stopping performance. So ladies and gentlemen, let's do this now. Please make some noise for the incomparable, our Miss Ross, Miss Angelica Ross. Yes. Bye. 
understand a few rules. Don't touch, back it up, slay whatever you do. When I walk through this room, gotta follow these rules. Don't touch, back it up, don't hate, serve it up. On another level between me and you. A basic connection and nine. performance in the middle of the street in the middle of the parade. Yellow. All right, bravo, right. Miss Ross. Yay. You can all listen to Purr over and over again wherever you like to stream your music. There are a lot of performances to come and more coverage of the hundreds of floats and performers that will be rolling past our cameras right behind us and right in front of other yeah. cameras we have everywhere. And speaking of rolling, I'll be spending time out there with the nearly oh. one million people on the march route today. The route begins just two blocks of where we are, north of here at 26th and 5th, then it leads south, then west to West 8th Street, on to Christopher Street, we'll roll past the Stonewall Inn, of course, the site of the 1969 historic Stonewall Uprising, which gave birth to this annual march the following year. I will be rolling and rocking and rolling. And we will be in the parade in spirit yes. with you in the march. Yes. But one of today's Grand Marshals, Randy Wicker, was there and witnessed the infamous Stonewall riots. Randy is known for his involvement in the early gay liberation movement and possesses a veritable encyclopedia of knowledge from the early years of LGBTQIA plus activism. We caught up with Randy at last week's New York City Pride Rally. My name is Randolph, Randolph Hayden Wicker, but people call me Randy Wicker, and I am Grand Marshal of 2023 Pride, and I'm so proud of that honor. I am a proud 85-year-old activist who's been active in the gay movement for 65 years, and I'm not finished yet. In 1969, all the riots in Stonewall got people really mad, and a lot of people, hippies from New York, angry about Stonewall, came down there on July the 4th. They, they said, we have to have a Pride March in New York City. So when we finally decided to have the Pride March at the first time, we got together, and we were marching up. And so I look back, and as far as I could see, we had had thousands of you thousand and these join us and we had the first gay liberation march and that was a birth of pride i am so excited for the march we're not going to fall for the intimidation that they pulled we are peaceful people i believe in the methods of martin luther king and that's what we copied in the gay movement we don't progress in this society through violence. We progress to becoming part of the political system, registering and vote, and we're gonna succeed in that. We're gonna have a fabulous pride, and we're gonna celebrate diversity and unity. We're coming together, we're moving forward, we're gonna win this fight. He is fabulous, Randy. I spent some time with him a few weeks ago. His passion is effusive. Uh, such a commit, committed spirit to this to this movement. And Randy began as an activist back in 1958, 11 years before Stonewall Uprising. And like he said himself, he is still going strong. Yes, and he has seen it all and then some. And all of today's Grand Marshals, believe me, are amazing activists for the community. Yeah. Hope Giselle, Yasmin Benoit, AC Dunlau, and Grammy, Emmy, and of course, Tony Award winning actor, singer, and writer, Billy Porter. And we'll hear from all of them in just a little bit. But boy, when you see Randy go in this parade, you want to kick Aww. off those platforms and jump yeah. and applaud because, <laughs> all right.
Right, there's still so much more to come, including performances by Brooke Eaton, Laura Morano, and a ballroom vote dance performance by the House of Basquiat. The 53rd annual New York City Pride March continues right here. And we are here, the New York City Pride March well underway right behind us. Murray, you have been so excited because you have seen so many friends. I've seen friends, and it's always a great pride when you see the dykes on bikes driving through. There's some old school members from the queer community, and they are out and proud today. We were dancing here. The band was amazing. They I know, had Whitney like, Houston. I'm getting, I mean, we're, we're almost time to get our gay on. <laughs> the, the dancing doesn't stop. The dancing doesn't stop. Pride across America here in New York City and Chicago and San Francisco soon where the festivities are set to begin there shortly. Our ABC News Live marathon coverage of Pride 2023 continues right after the All break. Right. Damn, go, go. <laughs> For decades, this great leader, often at Dr. King's side, was denied his rightful place in history because he was openly gay. No medal can change that, but today we honor Bayard Rustin's memory by taking our place in his march towards true equality, no matter who we are or who we love. here in Poland. Here in Kentucky, no match for the tornado. From Monterey Park, California, on the ground in Ukraine. Reporting from Uvalde, Texas. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. From Kathmandu, Nepal. In Truckee, California, covering record snowfall. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. Here at this airport in Tampa, it's already shut down. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Reporting from Jerusalem. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's Bring how you start your, your day, people. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? <laughs> How cute. Yeah. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lindsay Davis. We begin tonight here in Buffalo, London, in Alaska, Uvalde, Kentucky, from Poland, Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. Did you ever have a conversation about an abortion? Is she lying? Do you have a political aspiration? Absolutely. You ready for this? Go! You're going to deliver a show that will be remembered forever. Ooh, the fresh army. You are just <laughs> a tough, bad <laughs> So much happening these days, it's hard to keep up. Things change hour by hour, minute by minute. 
the historic weather that's now unfolding. The worries on Wall Street. We're bringing you the right now. Been a nationwide teacher shortage. The right now look at the day ahead. An alert this morning for dog owners and the key takeaways from the biggest stories. World News Now and America This Morning, America's number one early morning news. Today does feel a little different. Early mornings on ABC News Live. mean to me finding a community to share my art with, finding a community to share my struggles with, and growing together, being able to celebrate with each other is what pride means to me, and all the beautiful, colorful people out there. Welcome back to ABC News Live's Pride Across America extravaganza. Yes. The 2023 New York City Pride March is underway. I just saw Billy Porter go by. Yes. Uh -huh. Just went by, and you've been hearing his song right now. Oh, yeah. And it is an amazing, amazing song. You're having a good time, right? It's like the queer Super Bowl. It's amazing. <laughs> it's like the halftime show. The whole parade is a halftime show. That's so amazing. And we're all on the same team. Yes. Let's send it. <laughs> Take a listen in with our friends at WABC. City Pride November 2021. So now I can like officially welcome, welcome. you. How's Thank it going? You. How it's is fantastic. it going? Yes, yes, yes. The yes. weather's held up for us. Thank don't, you, Sam. Don't, don't, <laughs> because we may have some storms this afternoon, so we're just kind of all holding together, right? It's wonderful. It's a great day for us here, and we're so excited to, to just really have all the community out and, and proud. And Sandra, we'd see this event today, but it's a massive undertaking. You'll probably start planning for Pride next year tomorrow. Oh. What I'm does on it 2025. Take? Oh, yeah. there you go. What does it take like to put that. this? Give people an idea of the, all the moving parts. Well, I think what people, um, I, I'd like people to remember most is that this is a labor of love for us. This comes together with thousands of volunteer hours. Um, we, we rely on the community, all of our stakeholders to come together and really pull in unison. So that, to me, is part of our strength and solidarity message and uh, we're really thankful. So I think the message and, and what I hear all of my friends talking about, Sandra, is this year, like I, I don't even remember a time since the Woo! 80s that our community's been under attack. Absolutely. And so how oh, has God. that kind of set up this year's Pride for Heritage Pride? How have you guys taken what's going on and turned it into today? Well, I think for us, this is an opportunity not only to celebrate, but really talk to our allies and the community at large about the issues that are at stake. We're really looking at a rollback of our basic human rights, our yeah. legal rights. Yeah. Um, we're really worried about our young people. Um, so this is our way of coming together, bringing both political parties and, and uh, community members together to really focus in on what's important, which is our youth and, and uh, human rights. And the march is just now kicking off, so we've already seen an explosion of energy. How does it feel different this year than maybe previous years? Um, you know, I think people know that a lot more is on stay, mm. at stake. Mm. And, um, and in a joyful way, we're really trying to make sure that people understand we are not going to be erased mm -hmm. and we are here and we are going to uh, with positive messaging and a lot of hard work win the fight ultimately. Yeah, I, I think so. And I think that what, you know, we've gotten used to be this being a celebration, but it is also what you talked about, getting everyone together, finding our alliances, putting our power together. So walk us through what you've already, you said you're working on 2025. So what, are, <laughs> what have we got working on 2024? Oh, goodness, 2024, you know, the themes always emerge from the community. They suggest themes to us. We, we take them up and really try and live into them. So I don't know what next year's theme is going to be, but um, as always, we try and uh, educate as many people as we can, as yeah. well as advocate for the community. And then just say, hey, now we can celebrate. 
but but let's keep it up all year long because that's really what we have to make sure people understand. Sam, I heard someone say such earlier today, Sam, someone said, you know, there's been some vandalism of some of the pride flags at the sure. snap. They right said, around. you take down one, we'll put up five, we'll replace it. That's exactly right. We're not going anywhere. Okay. All right. Okay. I love having you here to kick us thank off. Oh, thank, thank you so you much all. for the work that you thank do. You. Very much all appreciate year. you. All. Yes, all thank right. you. Thank we you. We love so you right back. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Today's New York City Pride March is the culmination of thousands of Pride celebrations nationwide, and many here in New York City hosted by Heritage of Pride. Now, one of them was the rally on Christopher Street near that Stonewall Inn that we've been talking about, the birthplace of the Pride movement in 1969. It sparked the first Pride March in 1970. This year's rally continued on the spirits of the march's beginning with inspiration and positive vibes about our future. is really a time for us to come together to put the queer community first and to prioritize our marginalized siblings, trans folk. We have to be out here on the front lines. We have a lot of stuff going on today. We're gonna hear choir sing. We're gonna hear amazing speeches. We have performances. But above all, you're gonna see the love from our community come together and produce an amazing Pride Rally today. I'm so excited. We just wanna support each other. We wanna be there for each other to make sure that we are seen and we are heard and we are protected. We are in the era of the rebellion, right? Pride started off as a riot. It has become a rebellion and it will soon be the revolution. Next year is 2024 and we have the elections coming up and we really have to band together as a community to make sure that we are protecting our own and making sure that we are electing politicians that genuinely care about us. We're always being inundated with anti-trans legislation, with hate, with backlash, with a lot of misinformation, and we have to stand strong with our advocates and our allies. We need to elevate the people that are in our community. We are capable, we are talented, and we are just as viable in our communities as anyone else. Reach out. Use every resource that you have to gain access to spaces that you never thought you could be in. And baby, I promise you could do it. I gotta go run this show. <laughs> I love smart I, political voices. Uh, yes, yes, so the yes. center just went by behind us. We also had Gotham Cheer yes. happening, so there's a lot going on. Um, for the center here, this group that's behind us, the heart and home of NYC's LGBTQ community, providing programs for health, wellness, and community connection. Yes, and, and what a day, what a celebration. If we look behind us, I mean, rainbows, pink, yeah, brown, the costumes black. are always great. This always makes great me happy. Great energy. Hello, everybody. Everybody waving around behind love us. It, love we it, also have it. News Copter 7 up this morning, ah, so yes. I've seen the sky shots going on. But it's a really good turnout this year. And, you know, last year it was so brutally hot, but everybody still hit that pavement, and they were still walking it out. And this year we were a bit concerned about the weather, but look, even if it had rained, if it was cloudy, if it's hot, we do it. It's important. The weather is... What it is. What it is. Yeah, I know. We show up no matter what it is. Yes. Yeah, I'm just so happy to see the folks who are behind us. So we're only getting started right here. Still to come, more from today's Grand Marshals. Angelica Ross will join us as co-host. And more music from Brooke Eaton. Laura Morano is coming up as well. So there's so much more to happen. We're going to see the Imperial Court behind us, the House of Evangelista, Team New York Aquatics. Everybody's in the lineup. Sam and Lauren are doing such a fantastic job on WABC covering the New York City Pride Parade and more from the streets of New York City in just a moment as we celebrate Pride across America here. We are heading to Chicago soon where the march is about to kick off. Our ABC News Live Marathon Pride coverage continues right here after a quick break. Stick around. You're watching ABC News Live. There we go. New York City, Chicago, side by side. We're back in a moment. The Space Shuttle Challenger's five astronauts are sleeping now after a virtually flawless launch and first day. This is the seventh shuttle mission, and with no hitches, it might have been considered routine. But as the Challenger climbed today, it carried an American woman astronaut, Sally Ride, into space and into history. Lynn Scherr has the story. 
She was grinning with excitement even before she left the earth. Even before the crowds here chanted, Ride Sally Ride, as Challenger took its supercharged journey into space. And liftoff, liftoff of STS-7 and America's first woman astronaut. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right guys? Bring your friends. Oh wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom, boom, boom. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. This is ABC News Live Prime. Thanks so much for streaming with us. Live reporting, breaking news, exclusives, award-winning, powerful, eye-opening. ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Streaming weeknights. Amanda Lemmett. Lola Ken. Sander Pump rules. Outrageous. Devastating. Insane. Heartbreaking. Lawsuits. I have to put up a big fight. The Randall Scandal. Love, Loathing, and Vanderpump. Only on Hulu. My son has been missing since March of 2021. I haven't seen or heard from my sons. The kids were gone. It was horrifying. I have no idea if he's alive. Warren thinks he's God, and they think he's God. I want to make this very clear. If the law officials, FBI, doesn't stop Warren, thousands will die. Impact by Nightline, now streaming on Hulu. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from Miami Beach, I'm Victor Okendo. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. LGBTQI plus influencer is Brendan Rock. Uh, he's just hilarious, does so much for the community, and just really fun to watch. You're watching Pride Across America on ABC News Live. Yes, you are watching Pride Across America on ABC News Live. Welcome back to the show. We want to go ahead and bring in our team now in Chicago as we get ready for the festivities to begin right there. ABC News Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z is there, along with correspondent Alex Perez in Chi-Town. Who you got there? Hey, we are so excited because our friends from the powerhouse Chicago station WS gonna be leading the Pride March coverage here in Chicago, as they always do. But we wanna bring in their reporter, Jason Knowles. And Jason, this is very exciting. 
We're just about to see a little rain briefly. But I know, fingers crossed. Aside from that, <laughs> um, tell us what we can expect at the Chicago Pride this year that might be different. Well, there's always a lot of energy. It's always exciting. It's amazing when you're on the streets. I was saying before on my social media posts that I've been coming to this parade since I moved to Chicago 19 years ago. Wow. Um, in some ways, it was a little more fun when I was first here because I could just kind of relax and we were <laughs> drinking a little bit on the side <laughs> of the street. No, and I would wow. see you too yeah. in Chicago. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's evolved through the years. I was on the float for a few years, which is fun. It's an amazing experience to like see it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. Last year, my first year on the street, which was so cool mm -hmm. because you're seeing all the people like right in the middle of the street, interviewing them, and so many people so happy to just be here. And of course, you know, they're here, they're not silenced, they're having fun. Glad for uh, equal rights and yes. pride and love and joy and all that good stuff. I wanted right? to ask you about that, Jason. <laughs> We're old friends, by the way. We've yeah. known each other for a very Forever. long time and colleagues <laughs> at work as well. We've been here many years in a row, as you said, but it's important to come here and it's important to be here because for a lot of people, this is the first time they get to express themselves and be themselves. Right, right. And you see a lot of people from a lot of smaller towns around mm. the area and around the region, around the Midwest and families that come here. And you know, this is their, their time to just be able let loose and, and be themselves. And unfortunately, uh, you know, there still are some areas and some places, you know, even in Chicago where people feel like they maybe can't be themselves. So this is a great opportunity for that. And as you talk to people down the street, I know you interview a lot of people, you ask them about what's it like to finally be yourself, and you get a lot of great responses from people because this is life-changing for some of them. Right, right. I mean, I've had some people that were actually, you know, close to tears. You know, you see two lesbian women and their children here at the Pride Parade, and they said, you know, we aren't really able to do this where we're from, and we come here and we're happy and we're safe. And so, yeah, you do see that, and you see a lot of people too, um, a lot of transgender teenagers, mm -hmm. they're, they're here and they are just so happy to just kind of be free and feel good and, and just kind of feel that love. And to celebrate who they are. And yeah. we love Okay, it looks like we lost our friends there, Ginger <laughs> and Alex. Hey, it's live television. That's what happens. And that's why Chicago's not the best prop. Oh, stop it. <laughs> it! It starts in less than half an hour there in Chicago, and you will be able to see it right here on ABC News Live. Uh, Jason Knowles, phenomenal reporter there at yes, WLS. Sir. And I think we got that signal back, Ginger and Alex. You want to finish off real quick? Hey, 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 LZ, yeah. I heard you. That's not true. <laughs> Chicago is the best pride. Come on. <laughs> Jason, um, we're really glad you were with us. Yeah, I'm so happy yeah. to be here. I, mean, no, I know. So Okay, it, it looks like we keep losing that signal. We got to fix that. We got to fix that in a moment here. Hey, the 2023 New York City Pride March is underway. Let's go ahead and go back to our friends at WABC. Sam and Lauren continuing their coverage there of the big party. Take a look at this. And we are seeing incredible images here on the streets. And, and, and LZ, you just got very excited. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. That is an iconic drag house MC's voice you're hearing right now. I mean, been all over the world, changed the game, the energy, the hype. I was getting ready to go up on stage. Oh, I know. You, he was taking off that <laughs> headset. And I was like, LZ, where are you going? Yeah, but I didn't want to mess up my bun. And it took a while. So, you know. And you know what, guys? For a drag queen to be out dressed during the day,
today. It's historic. So I applaud every drag queen that actually made it on Pride, on time to the Pride Fair. <laughs> it is incredible how much work everyone is putting into their look right now on these streets here in New York City. Because look, it is hot. Thankfully, we've got this tent here, but it's a nice little breeze, but it is still hot. It is very sunny. Thank goodness we haven't seen that rain that we thought we would get yeah. that may come through a little bit later today. Uh, Ginger was warning us about that. But it is the excitement here. You can't drown that with rain, right? You just can't. And it kind of reminds you of just how important and how passionate people are about the artistry of drag in particular. Because to your point, it's hot. Yeah. Right? So not only are they going through the process of putting on this incredible outfit, but also enduring what it means to have this outfit on in this heat for hours on end. It's a dedication to a craft that just needs to be appreciated more. Yeah, you more. were just worried about a shirt. You brought well, several listen, different options. I brought different shirts. I might go pink when you guys after the break. <laughs> I don't know. Stay tuned. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and guys, you know what is important to, you know, there's a lot about getting ready and parading and stuff, but I think the biggest thing for the drag queens especially is that they are here to represent. And representation is showing up, being who you are, and, and just being unabashed about it. So I think that's a real important thing that we're seeing today. It's like, we're, we're waving the flag, but we are taking up space. We're showing everybody that we're happy, a positive, fun community, and most of us are good looking. Most. <laughs> Especially you. You know, we, we often call this, you know, we call this either a parade or a march, but really this is a march, right? And that is, the point is to honor the history of where we have come here in this country and where these marches have taken us. Right? Absolutely. I mean, it was one of the reasons why earlier this week I went back to Stonewall and I went with the first openly gay uh, NBA ref and I also went with a local uh, newscaster who's openly queer and we went back to pay homage to where it all began. It was really important for us to do that and remind ourselves that, yeah, it's great to have fun, it's great to get dressed and have the looks and all of that good stuff, but never forget how this started and why it started and why it needs to continue. That's right. And also continuing here, our WABC friends over there, Sam and Lauren, continue our coverage here. Let's go ahead and listen to that coverage of this big party, this important party yes. on the streets of New York. Take a look. Performance from her. I don't know if they're ready and to pipe her up change. and bring her on, but a major wardrobe change is coming up. Let's yes. also talk about who else is on the parade right, right now. Um, so after the Girl Scouts and Hedrick Martin, I think we've got Glitz, Inc., um, Gays and Lesbians Living in a Transgendered Society, Inc., founded in 2015 and created community housing in Queens. Cayenne is the godmother of the black trans movement. And so we just want to say hello and thank you to everybody who takes the time out to get everything together. The New York City Anti-Violence Project is out and kind of right behind that. We just got to thank so many people. Again, I just want to mention Hetrick Martin, who is out there. The HMI Institute works with LBGTQIA plus youth between the ages of 13 and 24 by providing a safe space to access their basic needs mental health and physical wellness programs, academic enrichment, job readiness trainings, so many people who work all year, but we celebrate them. We have a minute and a moment to celebrate them as they come right behind the stand. Can I just say her? I, 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 I can't do that, but I, I can. I, all right. Let's welcome a woman of many talents yes. who kicked off our show earlier with a spectacular performance and now joins us as co-host again this year, our Miss Ross, as we call Angelica Ross. Angelica. Can I, I don't want to yes. mess anything, oh, but I feel, like, I feel like I feel like I need some white love. Boy on my roster. Oh. Uh, Angelica, I have to say, every time I stand next to you, I feel very inferior what? all the way around. You are so fabulous. Thank you. Fabulous. But, Listen, but getting back to the roster, wait a minute, we have to. If you I tell got... me that you're feeding pasta, pasta. and lobster, and, oh. I'm done. And, and, I'm and, done. No, but, Bay, are we what? shopping on Tuesday? No, but you ain't. <laughs> you have not been feeding me pasta and lobster. <laughs> <laughs> you need to cash at me. <laughs> I, I know, right I know, I know. I don't know the whole thing, but it's a big deal, right? It is a big deal, but listen, it's just wonderful to be back here with you oh. all. You are all 
some of our brightest stars. And let me just tell you, when I'm here, I love being here because I am just a reflection of my community and the people I'm near. So there's no need for anyone to fear inferior because we're all stars. Oh, we're thank you for stars. the pep talk. We I love, love it. That. I love, love it. That. You know, Angelica, you are on the front lines leading on advocacy, focus on transgender rights and equality. We see it through your roles in TV, film, in the boardroom, and in the political world. But how do you do so through your music? You know, it's great, and I, I appreciate you saying that because really with music, it's another way to tell stories. Yeah. And it's another way to be authentic. And when you're a creator, I play piano. I play piano since the fourth grade. You know, and it's something that I don't need a green light for. I don't need a yes for. The only yes I need is my own. You know, so through my music, I like to show the joy as well as sing about, you know, the hardships and the heartbreak and the love and all the things. I want us to experience all the things through my music. Angelica, you, you know, we touched on this earlier, which is the theme of this year's March, which is incredible. Strength and solidarity. Ugh. <laughs> Can you give us a take on what that means to you and how important is that? You know, honestly, solidarity is so important because we have to realize that when oppression is coming our way, that tide is going to hit the, your feet soon. So you need to stand with each other sooner than later because we're under attack all bodies. Whether you're women, cis women, trans women, our right to choose is being taken away. So if we don't stand up for the next person, they're coming for you next, baby. Yeah. I Listen, I feel so wonderful. I feel like the whole thing just started when you got here. You have, you have every right message. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the parade. Let's get started. No, but speaking of great advocates and acclaimed producer, director, and award-winning actress Rosanna Arquette has been a supporter of multiple causes, but the one project that she holds most dear is the Alexis Project and Violence Intervention Program in Los Angeles, and here's why. The program is the namesake of her beloved sibling, Alexis, who she lost in 2016. I feel like we all lost. The world lost Alexis, and much more on this beautiful family and the story uh, of how that program grew out of it right here. I really do feel blessed that I live in a time where you can do this, you know? I mean, had I been alive a hundred years ago, this, this wouldn't be an option for me. So in a way, I'm like paying respect to all the transgender people that existed for hundreds of thousands of years, because I know that they've always been around. The Lexus uh, was groundbreaking really, really brilliant and fierce. She would be at every rally and march. She would be working hard, figuring out legislation, you know, and protection. This is just in our DNA. It's always been this way. We're, we're, we're the whole family are activists. So Dr. Astrid Hagar, who has the violence intervention program, and she's one of the people who created the forensic rape kit. And the work that she's done is extraordinary. I heard her speak and I went to her and Alexis had just died and I said, I wanted to, you know, donate some money on behalf of our family, but she said, I have a better idea. The trans community are being attacked all the time, and we have to do something about this. And she said, let's do this together, and we're going to call it the Alexis Project. So it was an incredible gift that this exists in Alexis's name. The Alexis Project provides trans and LGBTQ plus youth access to Hallmark medical, mental health, and support services. In today's climate, their work is more important than ever as we are seeing dangerous attacks on the trans and LGBTQ plus community every day. The Alexis Project is committed to normalizing health and mental health support for all LGBTQ plus patients and create a standard of care to improve access and services for all people without prejudice. Queer youth can find safety at the Alexis Project with specialized medical and mental health staff. If you are a teen or a young adult that identifies as part of the LGBTQ plus community and are a victim of violence or in need of health care, please reach out to the Alexis Project. And if you're someone who is able to support their important work, please consider donating. Thank you so much and happy Pride. The amazing Arquette family. You know, honestly, it's so wonderful just to see you. You've been so busy. So busy. I mean, I was just here last time playing Roxy on Broadway. Yes, you were. Oh and I applaud goodness. that because Thank you killed it. Thank you so much. It was just such a big experience. And then to see Jinx Monsoon come back behind that and continue to knock that door down. Uh, I'm so proud of our community. Yeah, it, things are things are happening. We, you know, we, we do have to fight. We do have a struggle. But on the other side of that, there's so many wonderful opportunities for us right now. But the fight can look 
very beautiful. Yeah, it can, and we can look good doing it. Yes, 2023 it marks the golden anniversary of some of our vital organizations. So let's say hello and thank them. PFLAG is the first and largest organization dedicated to supporting LGBTQ uh, plus families and their and, and people. Uh, Lambda Legal, which supports LGBTQ plus uh, IA families uh, and people living with HIV through impact litigation and public policy work. CBST, I got a lot of letters, people, so forgive me here, is a progressive voice within Judaism that welcomes all of those in the LGBTQIA. When I slow down, I get it right, plus community, and champions of Judaism that rejoices in diversity. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, that's where I want to be. And the National LGBTQ Task Force. I love these folks, which advance freedom, justice, and equality for all of our LGBTQ people. And earlier, we spoke to their executive director about their 50 years of service and our future. Love them. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I am here with a very important person here today, VIP, VIP. This is Kira Johnson, who is the executive director of the LGBT Task Force. Welcome, Kira. Thank you so much for having me. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. How are you feeling today, heading into today? Uh, on the celebratory note, but also 2023 where we are. You know, we have been um, we have been under fire. I mean, it is undeniable. But to, days like today remind us that even under the most intense circumstances, we have to remind ourselves of joy. We have to remind ourselves of progress. We have to remind ourselves to have pride in ourselves, in our ancestors, in our community, and living out loud is a form of resistance. So I'm super excited to be here today. Right now, around the country, in, in some key states, Florida, other parts of the country, major anti-LGBTQIA legislation in the communities. What can we do to keep our chins up, stay positive, and keep on with the fight? Well, I think the first thing we have to do is we have to have perspective. The, re the reason we are feeling this kind of attack is because of how much progress that we've made. And so that I think is really key. And so we just have to keep fighting. We have to keep showing up in our school boards. We've got to keep showing up at city council meetings. And we've got to continue to put pressure on our federal legislators to pass federal non-discrimination. The Equality Act just was introduced again this year, and there's no reason we shouldn't be able to get it done. Do you think that is one of the key things and will be a pivotal moment? Absolutely. Uh, the reality is, is we've made a lot of progress over the last five decades, but still today, the amount of discrimination that is happening across the country is palpable. And passing a non-discrimination policy, a federal one, could actually stem the tide. And right now, the tide heading into the election. Exactly. What are we, I mean, this is, any time is important and vital, but with the presidential election around the corner, what do you think is, uh, kind of a strategy? I think the time is now to, to lean into each other. Whether your issue is feminism and reproductive health and rights, or it's LGBTQ issues, or it's fighting for gun control, then the time now is to build a broad and big coalition and, and do it boldly together. And I think that's the winning strategy. Strategy today for you, Pride New York yes. City. As you said, a time to celebrate and reflect. What will be on your mind as you're heading down Fifth Avenue? I have got my children with me Yay. and they are they are with me and young people across the country who are being bold every day, living their truths, protecting their friends, be, being proud of their queer parents. I, that is what I'm going to be thinking about. All of the young people who are going to be out here today, all of the ones that can't but are with are with us in spirit. Right, because that's the thing. We look along the march route and we see all, everybody out there, but there's so many people here in our area but around the country that watch this exactly. that can't come out in their towns, in their cities, right? Yeah. So we're out there. The world is looking at us. That's right. And, and we are inspiring them. We are inspiring young people and elders across the country to do what they can when they can where they can and so it feels great to be a part of this uh in 2023 okay kira will you do the honors we want to do our cannonball graffiti rainbow fabulousness absolutely okay here you go lots of muscle oh my god i'm so Ready? excited okay okay oh god am i strong enough yes, for this you are. You got okay. it. no i'm not you oh my god it. Happy Pride! Happy Pride! <laughs> 
I love every second of that. Angelica, there's so many reasons for us being here today, and we're, of course, spotlighting the organizations who are making a difference every single day in the New York community, including the Ali Forney Center. Their mission is to protect LGBTQ youth from the trauma of family rejection and the harms of homelessness. Yes. So many stories. Hey, did you know that the late B. Arthur, I actually didn't know this, and I'm just kind of looking at it now, left $300,000 to this organization oh. to help them continue their work? Oh, yes. And you know, it's, I mean, B. Arthur. Yeah, all, come on. First of all. Right, right. But they're such a great organization. I was, I helped with one of their fundraisers uh, a few years ago. My friend Isis King as well. It's, they help so many of our communities. Yeah, they yeah. really do. And there's so many more people to highlight. So you guys just kind of snuggle up on the couch together. And, you know, we're right here to snuggle with you. We'll be right back. And you know, we almost missed our cue because we have just been standing and looking back and turned around and looking at all of the amazing folks coming through here. Sage just came through here, which is a, which is an organization yes. specifically for LGBTQ elderly folks. One of your favorite organizations. It is, and did you see what was on the bus? It, uh, it said, we refuse to be invisible. Yeah. And I think that's what's great about this broadcast is that everyone all over the country can see themselves represented. We're not invisible, we're here, and you're not alone. And it was so powerful to see them out there yes. in wheelchairs. Yes. Still in the parade, yes. right? yeah. still in this march, knowing that so many years, what they've gone through uh, throughout the years here, and they're still, no matter what, Absolutely. they are going and they are rolling their way down the march. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the Representative Richie Torres, the first openly queer member of Congress, uh, was very instrumental in securing funding locally for SAGE. It is also one of his dearest organizations. It was awesome to see them out there. The old gays, we are just on TikTok, <laughs> talk about SAGE yeah. as well. It's a fantastic organization. And to your point, it was wonderful to see them, wheelchairs and all. Yeah, and all the sparkles and glitter. I mean, the best parts of Pride are seeing all the people out here celebrating, yeah. and they go all out with the outfits. P20 Brooklyn, your uh, daughter's future. <laughs> For school also down here. Yes, yes, I saw them walking. <laughs> More from the streets of New York City in just a moment here as we celebrate Pride across America. Chicago is counting down and getting a lot closer. Our ABC News Live Marathon Pride coverage continues after a quick break right here on ABC News Live. We don't fight to change it, like, who's going to, especially as the younger generation. Sadly, there's a lot on our shoulders to change the world right now, from, like, the environment to racism to disrupting the whole political system. I think younger people are fighting to change all of that. It starts with us. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. I came out of jail with a plan. I was going to put every piece of energy I had into music. Give it up for Jelly Roll! If I wasn't a musician, I'd be dead. This was my best bet to really have an impact. <laughs> I'll cry with you. Who would have thought I could help people? I needed help, you know? I still need help. Somebody 
All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Can I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. The ultimate game of deception is back. Welcome to Claim to Fame. Season 2! 12 A-lister relatives will compete to keep their famous family a secret. I'm coming for all of you. I'm lying about everything. Oh. You can't trust anybody here. Can you guess who's related to who? I think he's related to Janet Jackson, Harrison Ford, Gal Gadot, and Hathaway. Your celebrity relative is... She's screaming, she's screaming, she's screaming. Claim to Fame premieres June 26th on ABC and stream on Hulu. I came out of jail with a plan. I was going to put every piece of energy I had into music. Give it up for Jelly Roll! If I wasn't a musician, I'd be dead. This was my best bet to really have an impact. <laughs> I'll cry with you. Who would have thought I could help people? I needed help, you know? I still need help. Somebody save me. I love you. Joining us now is the Tony Award winning actor from Some Like It Hot, Jay Harrison G. Thank Woo! you so much for. Woo! I mean, first we have to say, wait, can you show us your legs? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The yeah. legs, the leg kick is next level. That, there it is. <laughs> it's crazy. Wow. You, I mean, those legs are, you're like as tall as me in your legs. Oh, yeah. Uh, my, my mom always tells me I need to get them in short. <laughs> <laughs> we have to say congratulations. Thank you. I mean, when, when they announced your name, did you just lose your mind? I did, just a little bit. But the first thing I did was kiss my mother. She was my date for the Tonys. And I was just happy to give her her flowers and show her how she's made a difference in the world through her child. Oh, I love that. What's your life been like since that big win? I mean, I can imagine it has just changed drastically. I, not really. I've just received more love than I could ever imagine, literally from every direction. People I know, people I don't know. People will just pass me on the street and be smiling, and I'm like, oh, you know, you know. <laughs> so it's exciting. It's wonderful. It really is. Oh. And Jay, I've seen Some Like It Hot three times. Three um, times. I've never paid for a ticket, so thank you, Scott <laughs> and Mark. But congratulations. And I just want to say that your acceptance speech at the Tonys was so beautiful, and it was full of grace. And I really feel like you showed all of America how beautiful we can be. What, what inspired you to say that speech? It's truly why I did Some Like It Hot. It was uh, to be representation, to be a voice, to be someone that people could see on stage and feel a part of themselves. And I see it every night, eight times a week, people at the stage door are like, thank you for showing me that anything's possible. There are trans kids and trans artists who are like, I've never been so validated by a character, and that's why I do what I do, to be a part of my ministry of walking in my intention and purpose, but most importantly, with love. Does that make Pride this year a little extra special for you? Oh, for sure. It is, it is so wonderful to, again, be a voice and also show the world that, like, Humanity is 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 universal. We all stand in our truth, and we have to do that boldly, and not just on Pride, but 365 days a year. And we know you've also lent your voice to a special project that's honoring the history of the Stonewall Riots. Why is that so important to you? Because history, we have to know where we come from in order to know where we're headed. Uh, we've done a lot in in the world for Pride and and, and for the LGBTQIA plus community, but we've still got so far to go, and so we've got to use our voice and our platform to make a difference every single day. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Jay, not only do you use your platform, you are also the best tap dancer I have ever <laughs> You're the best non-binary tap dancer in the entire world. you got to see something like that. I mean, it's like, you're inspired me to... You know. <laughs> Listen, something like it hot, and that ain't bad, all right? Oh. You know, woo, woo, woo. message for those little kids out there that they don't feel comfortable yet. They're sorting it out. 
Shirley, you have to do what makes sense to you. It, it doesn't have to make sense to anybody else. You gotta do what aligns with your spirit, what brings you joy, and go out in the world and live out loud. It's hard, it's tough, but somebody's gotta do it. And we all have to do it confidently, boldly, and just dig deep. You are doing it. You are doing it. Jay Harrison G, thank you so much for thank joining for us here. Me. Some like it hot. Make sure you come to Broadway and you watch that. Yeah, Schumer Theater, eight times a week, 44. <laughs> Woo! There you go. Showbiz. Hey! hey. <laughs> And we want to bring in our team in Chicago as we get ready for the festivities to begin there. ABC News Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z and correspondent, correspondent Alex Perez are live in Chi-Town. Hey there, guys. Hey. hey! Oh, you heard everybody cheer. Almost on cue. It's like they heard us. <laughs> and you know what that screaming is, though, right? Because the parade is about to start. You can probably make it out behind us here. Guys, you can feel the energy, the excitement of oh the air, right? Oh my goodness gracious, the streets are lined. There are gonna be nearly a million people at this parade alone, just packing the streets of Chicago. It is, I will say, my favorite parade, and I cannot believe we get to see this long tradition, 52 years of it, come down the street in just moments. 52 years, this year there are about 200 different groups marching in this parade, and really today is about showcasing that love, that support, mm -hmm. and also walking down the street, striding and having some fun, because I yes. think that's what a lot of these people are going to be doing. <laughs> the parade has started, and that means our friends at WLS Chicago, ABC7, they're taking it over from here. Let's see Chicago's 2023 Pride Parade. Time advocate for racial and social equality. Kim, it's a joy to have you back with us. I am so glad to be back. I was here last year. I had so much fun, and I am thrilled to be with you again today. Wonderful stuff. We are also so happy to be joined by our friend Jason Knowles, our ABC7 investigative reporter who is out on the street for us today. Jason, I love the energy we're getting from the crowd already, and we haven't even stepped off yet. I know a lot of energy. You know, I kind of feel like I have the VIP area here on the street. Nobody's here yet, but that's all about to change shortly. The floats behind me, people lined up. You can see some of the police there. Oh, it looks like they're all starting to come here. And on the sidelines here, Lots of people with their flags, they are excited. We lost every, we lost I'm not plugged in. <laughs> I can't hear, so. Yeah, I'm with you. We're I'm here. not, I need my. It's all about diversity, inclusion, and fun. We're here to have a whole lot of fun as well. So, the opening banner is proclaiming the start of this wonderful parade. We are off and running, or off and walking, as it will, <laughs> the 52nd Annual Chicago Pride Parade. Wonderful it is, 52nd year, 52nd year. And for many who are here, gosh, I mean, how many pride parades have y'all taken part in over the years? Oh, gosh. Uh, some I, I don't remember, Tom. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and that's going to be a running theme. <laughs> I think there are others who feel similarly as we watch that opening banner walk, that, walk down the street, march down the street. And we have our first vehicle here. It's a drop top kind of day, Tanya. It totally is. It is. <laughs> Love that car. It's a 73 that's Buick. It, that's it, that's I, I, we it. could fact check it, but I'm going to believe the license plate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to, I, the, the glare on the yeah, screen, it's really hard to tell. Yeah, see who they are, to be honest about it. <laughs> well, we talked Somebody about being important. fuzzy. We talked We're about being fuzzy today. We're starting with important people. Well, we know yeah, that man. Well, we know that. There we go. We know hey, that. Mr. Mayor. The new mayor of Chicago, Brandon Johnson. This is Brandon's, I'm uh, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> you got a little too familiar there. Yeah. Yeah. Things have changed. <laughs> this is his first uh, Chicago Pride Parade as a mayor. His administration has promised to be a champion for LGBTQ rights throughout the city as uh, it views Chicago as a regional hub for the LGBTQ community and culture. That's our mayor. And a longtime tradition for elected officials to be walking in the parade. I don't know, man. He's got some long sleeves on. I know it's white to, you know, to reflect the sunlight, his shirt mm -hmm. there, but it's going to be warm. Hey, it, it, he's still dancing. It's, 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 just, it's the first one in. Yeah. This is the beginning of the parade. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're starting strong. <laughs> we'll follow up in a he's few got a blocks. Long way to go. Oh, and I love on. this. Uh, yes. 
Tommy DiLorenzo convertible here. A longtime Pride Parade fa favorite uh, with his beautiful, colorful balloons by Tommy joining him, his husband Scott as well. And they did not disappoint. Look they at it, they're like balloon talk. peacock feathers. Those yeah, they know how to do balloons. Look <laughs> at that. And they brought some music too. Hey, okay. Tommy and Scott. Hey. Yes. Cody, I was at I was at a fundraiser this week. Okay. And and I had a, a friend who was part of the LGBTQ community come mm -hmm. up to me and say, girl, I'm gonna give you a little music tip. <laughs> uh -oh. I uh -oh. want you, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna start off with it right now and I hope he's watching, James. He said, whatever you do, he just all you have to do is say this. Padum padum. Padum. Padum padum. Tanya, you, and everyone you will know what the you're lingo. talking about. You got the code. Yes. Do I, do I <laughs> If, if, if you walk up to someone, you say padam, they say padam back. It's a safe space, Tanya. You know what to do. Well, the reference, the reference here, for those who don't know, because I didn't know, it's a Kylie Minogue song mm -hmm. that is blowing up the clubs it's, overseas. It's, it's blowing up in my and living room, too, Tanya. it's making its way over here. Look at this cutie pie here in her tie-dye t-shirt. That's right. We're going to have all ages. Yeah, yeah this, is yes. the, this is the Near North Montessori, Montessori School. School at Near North Montessori School. You won't find the traditional school setup they're doing a little different instead students will be immersed in dynamic learning labs where they're encouraged to explore questions about the world around them how about that to them diversity can be race ethnicity gender economic status or even learning differences i like their little school bus there how they got it decorated yeah they you got know, the wagon in tow as well. Now, we've added a lot of colors to the pride we flag have. over the year. At we some at, at some point, we're just going to make it a pride blanket. <laughs> you know? <laughs> just, we'll just wrap ourselves we, up in We it. try to embrace everybody. As we well should. <laughs> as we well should. And, and you know what's so cool about seeing these kids come through is That's we know cool. what's happening in other parts of the country, right? Yeah. Where kids cannot be affirmed. And now we've got kids out here celebrating pride and with their parents. And it's such a beautiful sight to see this in Illinois. And Absolutely. another school coming through right now, Francis Parker School out on Webster at Clark and Lincoln Park, right across from the beautiful and free Lincoln Park Zoo. Private school there on Webster. You can always see the kids out playing in their big yard there. And here they are playing in our yard at the 52nd <laughs> Annual Pride Parade. You, to follow up on that point, it's so good to see the young people being included in this because they're learning these important lessons from the start. Mm -hmm. And they shared them. The rest of their lives. Yeah, it looks like they're also partnered with the Catherine Cook School, which is an independent school in Chicago with more than 480 students from preschool through eighth grade. Known as the Melrose School until September 92, the school changed its name to the Catherine Cook School when it moved to its current location on West Schiller in the Old Town neighborhood. Nice to see the kids out here learning a few lessons on equality, respect, and fun. And fun. And fun. And fun. Let's not forget the fun. That's right. Even though we've got a lot of lessons to learn, let's not forget also that the biggest lesson is uh, to love each other. That's right. Have fun along the way. All right, American veterans for equal rights coming down the path there. Ahead of them, there we go, the LGBTQ chapter of this organization, Aver, Aver. More than 250,000 members open to anybody. Listen to the cheers here. Yeah. Open to anybody who is currently serving or who has honorably served in the U.S. Armed Forces from World War II all the way to the present, including the National Guard and Reserves. The organization has more than 250,000 members. It's open to anyone who is currently serving or who has honorably served in the U.S. Armed Forces from World War II to the present, including the National Guard and Reserves. I gotta give a shout out to my parents who both served and my sister. Oh, we thank you all for their service. Who was proudly out in the military as well. So this, right. this one hits close to home. It certainly does. Look don't ask, flag. don't tell, repealed in 2010. Mm. And that stunning flag. It is a Blanketing our parade route flag. Right now. Well, that says it all, doesn't it? That flag right there. It covers all people. Absolutely. Uh, what a beautiful creating way a to lot say of shade on this Jose, you just gave me a little <laughs> chill right there. I'm inspired. <laughs> <laughs> it's chill, chill, not shade. Yeah. <laughs> chill, not <laughs> Love it. We see the VA Heinz Hospital. Proud to serve all who serve. 
We got to admit, these people have a long way to walk, so we hope they reserve their energy because right now we're getting the, the full effect. But by the time they get out there to where the crowds are, mm -hmm. I hope they have something left because that's where it crowds <laughs> in and the people we got. Oh, that's the ticket right there. Your rollerblade down. Rollerblade. Rollerblade. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Our friends up. The Lycée Francais here in Chicago, where children can get a private education in French in Lincoln Square out on Wilson and Damon. May we? May we? Oui, bien sûr. What is pride in French? Is it fierté? It's pride. Or it is pride, depending on how you say I had two years of high school French and two years of college, and I don't speak any French. Kim, I'm with you. All I remember is Jem Hambone, and that means I like ham. What about Julie? What about Julie? I miss that one. You know, now you know you know I've that. I've been Lady Marmalade back in my day, Jose. I get it. State Representative from Illinois' 5th District, Kim Bucklett. I hope I'm saying that right. I think that's her out in front there. Hello, Kim. Yeah. Thank you for marching with us in Chicago's Pride Parade. There she nice. is, yep. See, isn't that lovely? When, when you have that's, so, that's so kind of them to put uh -huh. their picture on the picture. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it, it, it can be hard to see what's yeah, happening from this little screen here. That's Kim, that. you are just so thoughtful. <laughs> and that's the Chicago way. There's, there's, there's Mike Quigley. Thank you, Mike. Yes. Yes. Mike Quigley. There there's is. Mike Quigley. Chicago's own. Yeah. yeah. He's at every festival, every proper. And we're just talking to Raja. Uh, Raja just Christmas call me Raja. Raja. That's exactly it. The Richard, Richard Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer. Bender, Banner as well. He has done so much, did so much, I should say, to make this an institution in Chicago. And there's Roger Christopher Marcy right there. Richard Pfeiffer was well known as a champion for Chicago's LGBTQ plus community. More than 50 years mm -hmm. leading Pride Chicago, which of course facilitates the annual gay and lesbian Pride Parade. Is that the teachers' union I'm there seeing are, coming yes. up for more than 85 years? Mm -hmm. Chicago teachers' union has been at the forefront of education, advocacy, and public school reform in Chicago. They represent nearly 30,000 teachers and educational support personnel working in the Chicago public schools, and by extension, the students and families they serve. And what a job they've had the past few years. Chicago, you feel the heat. It's going to be broken by the rain in about 10 minutes, but it's not going to break the spirit. Well, I feel the heat, Ginger, but it's also hard for me to sit still. We have to stand still here because we're talking to all of our wonderful people who are watching, but with all this happening, I'm like bopping and moving around and dancing. So much more, though. I got ahead. happy feet. I ca I've got the happy feet. We're watching all the happy feet behind us, but we've got so much more here in Chicago and around the nation as we celebrate pride across America. We'll be back. You would think that um, a, a gay choreographer would get respect and credit um, a lot easier in an industry like dance and choreography, but it's kind of all the same thing. You know, I've, I've ran into a lot of just difficult moments being a young black choreographer in, in, in that respect. you're going to get on this show. That's all I'm going to tell you. Yes, Whoopi! This mic on? Can you hear me out there? 
behind the scenes is always a better show. Absolutely. Always. Absolutely. That's what people don't see during the commercial break. Right. They don't. What happened? I had no idea really what I was getting myself into. That day that we walked out, I, I treasure that day. I just, I couldn't sit there. You're doing good, Joy. You're doing good. Oh, yeah, baby. It was crazy. Behind the Table. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7 straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live America's number one streaming news. When I got sent to Idaho to cover the murders of four college students, it was a story that didn't make any sense. Four students stabbed to death in their beds while two roommates were home. You gotta think to yourself, okay, who's the target and how many people would a man go through to get to his target? I'm Kana Whitworth with ABC News. This is the story of savage murders, a determined small town police force and a scholar of crime. This is The King Road Killings, a new podcast from ABC Audio. Listen now, wherever you get your podcasts. Your Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from the Capitol, I'm Terry Moran. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming with ABC News Live. Extravaganza. I'm proud to be from this city of Chicago. It's my hometown and it's a place I love so much and one that you once worked yeah. at right here with me, Ginger. Five years and then my stepfather's from here. I've got family in every pocket of Chicago and so it feels like a second home to me as well. Um, what's so great is I just saw on the side of one of the floats it said, we have stories to tell. And I know that you know of a place here. We've covered these pride marches together, but we've also covered the news here. And one center that you got to visit is helping with activists to get these stories told, not yeah. just from here, but from small towns all over the Midwest. From all across the Midwest. It's called the Center on Halstead, and I was lucky enough to spend some time there. It's really a beacon for light and energy right here in the Midwest, Ginger, and they do amazing work. I got to spend some time with them, and I want to show you all they're doing over at the center on Halston. Let's take a look. We may celebrate pride in June, but the spirit of pride and commitment to important work lives year-round here at Chicago's Center on Halstead, the biggest LGBTQIA community center in the Midwest. We are more than a 1,000 people a day pass through these doors for unique services and resources that in many cases save lives. From a variety of support groups like families with trans, non-binary or bisexual loved ones, to youth sports, resources for LGBTQ seniors, to resume building, and even a free seven-week culinary arts class for those looking to gain competitive skills and land a job. 
people have talked about how this class has just made them a better person in a lot of different ways, more than just cooking skills. Chef Jenny Urban takes a hands-on approach with her students. They spend hours fine-tuning and mastering the tricks of the trade in this state-of-the-art commercial kitchen. Good. And that's just the beginning. Chef Urban says for many here, this is the first time they could be their true, authentic selves. Kitchen culture universally is a way to express who you are. Our students deserve to show up in that kitchen being who they are, too. You don't want that in your cut. You just want a one-time For many students, the kitchen skills learned here will translate to every aspect of their life. Part of what we're doing in this training program is helping our students advocate for themselves. Yeah, go with that then. All right. When they face these challenging moments as a queer person in the workforce, we want them to understand their own worth and how to advocate for their own careers and growth. There's just so much fear. Sharing his own challenging experience is what motivated Scott Takas, with help from the center, to create the support group Gay Fathers of Greater Chicago for gay dads who left their traditional marriages and came out later in life, as he, a father of three, once did himself. Some people that may have even reached a point where maybe they've come out to their wives and were trying to figure out what to do next. You know, they have kids. Um, how is that going to impact the family? It's a nerve-wracking, life-altering experience for some, he says, who can be shunned and left feeling like unfit parents. Some, like myself, didn't even have gay friends. So when they begin to question their identity, they didn't have anyone to talk to. And there's a lot of fear that comes with that. His group, now in its eighth year of supporting and helping gay dads find courage when they need it most. That's what people really need. They need to understand that it's not the end of the world, that it's important to be who your true self is and that your kids will love you and your family will love you. The center also helps connect people to therapy, substance abuse, HIV and other medical treatments and helps young adults who have been abandoned because they are LGBTQ. Well, there are young people out there who come out to their family or parents or express who they are and then they end up on the street. Unfortunately, it's it's very common. Luke Romsberg runs the youth housing program with anti-LGBTQ legislation being passed in states across the country. He's seen an increase in the number of young people struggling to have a roof over their heads coming here for help. We get a few almost every week that are coming from places like Texas, Iowa, even um, Florida. Besides a home, they help people get back in school, find training and apply for jobs. Pride Month is an opportunity to shine a light on the work at the Center on Halsted, but their year-round mission is more important than ever. They feel like the entire world is against them sometimes, and they look at Center sometimes as like a beacon of a place where they can be safe. To say that they're saving lives would not be an overstatement. They really are, and I'm so happy we got to showcase some of the work that they're doing there. Especially, you know, having lived here and not knowing much. I, I had passed it. I, I kind of knew maybe about it, but I didn't know currently what, how much they're doing. That's what's so special about having a parade or a march like this to let people know and put the magnifying glass on these places of light and joy. Yeah, absolutely. So happy we got to showcase them. But Ginger, we cannot ignore the elephant in the room. <laughs> We got some rain here in Chicago. When we say scattered, watch this. Everyone's drenched for about four minutes, and then it's going to clear, and the sun will come back out. So if that's not uh, my analogy for life, the storms don't last forever. There you go. In life, whether you're having them right now or in, you know, the On a day like today, having a short-lived storm, I think, is exactly what we need. Yeah. The temperature was getting a little warm, so yeah. this will kind of pull things up a little bit. And clearly, it hasn't really downed the energy. People are still energetic. I expected everybody to start running because I knew on the radar that this was going to happen. This is Chicago. These people are like, I don't care. It could start snowing right now. And they'd be like, yeah, and? I mean, we survived <laughs> the winters here. So a little bit of rain, as long as it's not dangerous, I think they're going to be OK. Now that I've lived in the Northeast, not to knock anybody there, but um, <laughs> slightly more sensitive to weather extremes. Yeah. Here in Chicago, I think we know. <laughs> Them very, very well. It takes a lot. I remember when I was in school, you get a little bit of snow, and you're like, oh, we're going to have a snow day. No, not here. Not here. Not no, here. you need feet, yeah. feet of snow. But this is, uh, back to the parade, just because 
as we see Chicago really, you know, you know that New York has been going and will be going probably for a good 10 hours or so. So we want to head back to Eva, Gio, the whole team, LZ. What's up, guys? Do you still have the club in pizza? Thanks. Thanks so much, Alex. And joining us right now is activist and actress and comedian Leah Delaria, the first openly gay comedian to appear on American TV, the one and only. Was it Arsenio Hall? It was Arsenio Hall, 1993. Do you remember your first joke? I uh, I said it's. I remember saying, uh, good, "Hello, everyone. My my name is Leah Delaria. It's the 1990s. It's hip to be queer, and I'm a big dyke." <laughs> Okay. That's what I said. <laughs> That's it. I love that I'm here with Murray. My brother Murray makes me so happy. We're like, now that we're together, people know we're not the same person. Yeah, let's, let's get, see, let's, let's Everybody's go. like, are you Murray Hill to me? <laughs> and I say, I have a mustache. My, I, I, yours yeah. is real. I have a, I have a mustache because I'm a Sicilian lesbian in menopause. So I've got a mustache. What's my excuse? I, you're scaring me. <laughs> yeah. Biological man, get out of here. I will get, no matter what I say, I'm going to get canceled. I'm just going to get canceled. Speaking of the way that we talk now, <laughs> <laughs> how has your journey been since those early days trying to get on, like Arsenio Hall, to where you are today? It's been a very crazy journey. You know, um, I start, I'm a, I've been a professional lesbian since 1982. Before that, I freelanced. Um, and I started out in San Francisco, and I was always out. I was out. I mean, look at me. Well, I'm going to talk about my boyfriend. What are you, crazy? So uh, I've always been out. I always talked about our queer community. I talked about what it was like to be a dyke, right? And at that time, it was also the age of AIDS. I, all my friends were dying, so I was filled with rage. Filled with rage. So I was crazy, and I would run around, and I would scream, and I would yell, and no wonder New York loves me. I was basically the personification of New York City. You know what I mean? And then to go from all of that to find myself on television and now doing this, it's like, how did that happen? How is it that I'm like on the parade road now? They're all like 20, 20, 20 year old girls, 25 year old girls screaming. I'm a Jonas brother screaming when they see me. I'm like, I'm 65 years old. Do you have any idea how long I've been doing this? And they're just like, ah! it's just, Wait, it's you're 65? Yeah, I just turned 65. Look at that moisturizer looking good. I mean, that's the, yeah, that's one Jeez. of the things about being queer, right? I mean, yes, yes, we are ostracized by our family and society. Sometimes we are murdered in the street, but we all look 10 years younger than we actually are. <laughs> so it could be worth it. <laughs> now, Leah, I want to give you props because you are the original OG. This is the first comedian I ever saw on television who was out and a dyke and proud. And you said you were angry. You're still angry. Oh, and yeah. That's what I love about you. <laughs> Because you're an OG. Now, you bring a lot of activism and anger and truth telling to the young kids. What do you, what do you, are you inspired by the younger generation? I have to say that Gen Z has been inspired, has been very inspirational to me. They, I, okay, they need to shut up and listen once in a while. You know what I mean? They don't know everything, but I thought I knew everything when I was 24 too. Do you know what I mean? So they are out there. They're screaming. When we got to a place, I felt we got kind of milk toast in our pride. We got milk toast in our, in our rally. What do you mean by parade. that? And we was, I was all like middle class man mainstream, you know, assimilationists that were going, we're just like everyone else, you know. And then the eight and a half foot tall drag queen walks by, you know, wearing six foot platform heels and opens her butterfly wings. We're not like everyone else and we should celebrate that at Queer Pride. And we have returned to that. Activism is in the forefront now because as they whittle away at our rights and they are trying to take, where's the camera? They are trying to take them away. They are trying to take them away. And uh, we are getting angrier and angrier, and that young generation is right in the forefront. Just listen a little bit more. You know what I love about you is that you use your platform to remind our community of the importance of our gathering spaces. Yeah. You have this incredible venue in P-Town, the yeah. historic LGBTQ plus friendly environment. But you also have a project trying to revitalize and say, yes, yes. Yeah, first of all, I own the club in Provincetown, Massachusetts, oh, yeah. the nightclub. We're going there tonight. Um, I'm, we're going right after right the right. Me, and, me and Murray. Wow. Go to Pete Can I get club. an invitation? We are, we're going to ride our bicycles. <laughs> and <laughs> I'll give anything oh. to see Murray on a bicycle. Oh, that's my float. Is this your float? <laughs> my float. God's love we deliver. That's my float. I'm the pride ambassador for God's love we deliver. And they're going by right now. we got to catch up to what them do they, eventually. What do they do? Um, that's Michelle Boudreau. The, the, yeah, Michelle's yeah, on the floor yeah, with me. Isn't she hilarious? It's the best. She's the best. Um, uh, 
we feed people who need to be fed in New York City. And it started in 1985. It was mostly for uh, the AIDS community. But now it's just anybody who has needs food, can't, doesn't have access to food, doesn't have access to the money to have food, and they serve 13,000 wow. meals a day wow. in New York City to people, to people who need food. That it's is, a kind of basic right. I mean, we live in the richest country in the world, and there are people starving. That's not right. That is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much for using your platform to bring attention to this issue of hunger. Celebrating Pride, Leah Delera, the iconic comedian. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much. And we'll be right back with more Pride Across America. Bye, everybody. Host host. Happy you Pride. Can't, you can't take our rights, because if you do, she's going to come and get them. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Save a life Whenever news breaks The crush of families here in Poland Here in Kentucky No match for the tornado From Monterey Park, California On the ground in Ukraine Reporting from Uvalde, Texas NBC News Live is right there everywhere From the scene of that deadly missile strike In Dnipro, Ukraine Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey From Charleston, South Carolina On the 2024 campaign trail from Kathmandu, Nepal. In Truckee, California, covering record snowfall. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. Here at this airport in Tampa, it's already shut down. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Reporting from Jerusalem. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Can I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lindsay Davis. We begin tonight here in Buffalo, London, in Alaska, Uvalde, Kentucky, from Poland, Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. Did you ever have a conversation about an abortion? Is she lying? Do you have a political aspiration? Absolutely. You ready for this? Go! You're going to deliver a show that will be remembered forever. Ooh, the press on me. You are just <laughs> a tough, bad <laughs> So much happening these days, it's hard to keep up. Things change hour by hour, minute by minute. The historic weather that's now unfolding. The worries on Wall Street. We're bringing you the right now. Been a nationwide teacher shortage. The right now look at the day ahead. An alert this morning for dog owners and the key takeaways from the biggest stories. World News Now and America This Morning, America's number one early morning news. Today does feel a little different. Early mornings on ABC News Live. America, y'all, all three parades are going on now. New York, Chicago, San Francisco. Let's head back out west to San Francisco, where the celebration just started. Devin Dwyer and KABC's Christian Cordero join us now. How's it going, guys? 
you can speak for yourself for a second. It's just getting underway, Eva. It's pretty extraordinary and loud. The crowds are out. A million people on the streets of San Francisco. The weather is great, and we got bubbles. The sun came out, and look, you can complain about the bubbles. This town is synonymous with the kickoff of pride here in San Francisco. And you know, cities like San Francisco, New York, Los Angeles, they are well-known safe havens for the LGBTQ plus community. But traditionally, so much of the social scene revolves around bars that cater to gay men. We met some women trying to change that, and another who owns a lesbian bar that has been around for decades. Take a look. When the Ruby Fruit started pouring wine in February, it helped end a five-year drought of lesbian bars in Los Angeles. People who've literally grabbed me by the shoulders and with tears in their eyes thanked me because they never could envision having a space like this. Emily Belagas and Mara Herb Herzman used to work in this space's previous restaurant. It's where they discussed opening a bar for queer women somewhere, someday. And just like that, the ruby fruit becomes a new piece of the city's history. According to the documentary short and campaign The Lesbian Bar Project, there are just 27 lesbian bars nationwide. In the hills of San Francisco's Bernal Heights neighborhood, owner Billy Hayes runs the Wild Side West, a treasured local bar with a long history of resistance. It's a refuge for anybody. I mean, it's, it's called a lesbian bar, but it's more everybody's welcome here. It has been that way since 1962, when Pat Ramsire and Nancy White first opened its doors. They went against all odds to open up a bar that uh, was woman-owned. And back in the 60s, women could own bars, but they couldn't serve. So they finally got to serve. Their friendship lasted through the rest of Pat and Nancy's lives. Billy learned she would take over the bar when Nancy died. It was in her will. In the 15 years since, the art on the walls has accumulated, but much of the Wild Side West has intentionally stayed the same. You know, you have people that uh, back in the day, they, they were all really community, and now you have people come in that sometimes doesn't understand the history, and it's like you have to say, hey, you know, this is a legacy, this is a historical bar. With a new wave of anti-LGBTQ plus rhetoric and legislation nationwide comes a demand for strengthening community. Just two and a half miles west of the Ruby Fruit is Honey's at Star Love in Hollywood. It is the nightcap to the Ruby Fruit's dinner date, a natural progression. And, and that's you can the hear it. And you can hear it. People are going, honey, honey, yes. honey, honey, honey. Exactly. People are literally going from here to there. And that's great. Honey's is operating out of a remodeled bar and event space. It's how Kate Greenberg stumbled upon it, with the thought of opening a bar for queer and trans women in the back of her mind. I think I called Charlotte immediately. You did, you did, you did. And then I remember the first time I saw it, Kate was so sure, and I was like, okay, let's yeah. see. And then I saw the space, and I was like, you nailed it. They, along with business partner Mo Falk, have put their experience in events and hospitality to use with collaborations, live DJs, and karaoke that started as a one-off. Now we do it every other week, so I think that's, it's nice that we have that piece of programming that people like really come back for um, and rally around. Are we like all singing Brandy Carlisle? Or... You know, there's always, I feel like usually there's like one Brandy Carlisle, <laughs> you know, maybe there's one Indigo Girls. girls. Right. Weirdly, a lot of like show tunes. We've got some theater queers. They have community, a place to run a tab, a place to make new friends, or to reconnect with old ones. Well, you always want to belong to something. You always want that acceptance. So you want that love. Somebody to notice you, to accept you. Happy Ride! And it is that sense of community. You know, I don't think a lot of people know this, but we said in the piece, right, how there are 27 lesbian bars around the country right now. In the 80s, according to the Lesbian Bar Project, there were more than 200. Wow, more so than 200 really bars, down to 27 down now. Down to 27. Why the change? Well, it depends who you ask. Uh, the answer is pretty nuanced, depending on who you ask, but it seems to come down to a couple of things. One is visibility around lesbians has changed overall. Even for me growing up on television, lesbians were portrayed a very specific way, and there wasn't a huge variety, and so I think I probably would have come out sooner had I 
uh, you know, seen a little bit more nuanced representation, um, but I didn't really identify with um, anybody there. And, and so, so now you're seeing a little bit more of that of where we can occupy spaces. And the other thing too is just gender inequities overall. Women have a harder time accessing capital, convincing people that this is a good idea, but obviously it's doing pretty well. But they're coming back. Yes. They're coming back. There's three in DC. There's a number in Los Angeles yeah. as well. Oklahoma great report. Oklahoma has three also. All right, yes. who knew? All right, thank you so much. It was a great thank reporting. You. And we're just getting started here in San Francisco, guys. We got bubbles. We got the parade underway. We got a huge crowd. We got the sunshine just came out. It's an awesome day. This is a historic parade, one of the largest in the country. And we're going to bring you more coverage from our friends at KGO right now here in San Francisco. Have, a, have fun. Here. We are live on the air until noon, and then we are streaming for the rest of the day until the last contingent passes us, and we will be right back. at stake. So much on the line. More Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right guys? Bring your friends. Oh wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom, boom, boom. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. This is ABC News Live Prime. Thanks so much for streaming with us. Live reporting, breaking news, exclusives, award-winning, powerful, eye-opening. ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Streaming weeknights. Randall Emmett. Lala Ken. Sander Pump Rules. Outrageous. Devastating. Insane. Heartbreaking. Lawsuits. I have to put up a big fight. The Randall Scandal. Love, Loathing, and Vanderpump. Only on Hulu. My son has been missing since March of 2021. I haven't seen or heard from my sons. The kids were gone. It was horrifying. I have no idea if he's alive. Warren thinks he's God, and they think he's God. I want to make this very clear. If the law officials, FBI, doesn't stop Warren, thousands will die. Impact by Nightline, now streaming on Hulu. I came out of jail with a plan. I was going to put every piece of energy I had into music. Give it up for Jelly Roll! If I wasn't a musician, I'd be dead. This was my best bet to really have an impact. <laughs> I'll cry with you. Who would have thought I could help people? I needed help, you know? I still need help. Somebody save me. I love you. America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from Buckingham Palace, I'm James Longman. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. And speaking of beautiful, I'm going to toss it over to my good friend, Jobina Fortz, and she is in the parade right now. Jobina, how's it going where you are? Yeah. It's giving. <laughs> All right, Drew. So shout out to Alaska Airlines because I like my clack fan at home, but they got me covered, okay? And I'm learning how to do all the tricks. They have a routine ready. And I have James here with me. James, talk to me about why you all are here today.
today. Alaska Airlines, longtime supporter of SF Pride, as well as Pride celebrations up and down the West Coast. We're here just celebrating living our most authentic selves. James, is this your first time here? If not, how many times have you been? What's changed? What's better? Give it to me. <laughs> it's my second time here at SF Pride. I'm actually new to the Bay Area. Um, yeah, it's uh, what's changed. It's This just seems to be an even bigger crowd this year. Yeah. You're celebrating. It's beautiful. Now, you see this whole crew behind me, right? Woo! They taught me how to do this. Wait, no, no, no. It's with the fingers. It's the light. It's a flick of the wrist. Excuse me. All right. Franco, you got to hit the music because we got a routine for you. Hit it, Franco. Let's go. This is the most amazing thing. Let's get into the shoulder action. Okay. with Executive Director Suzanne Ford of San Francisco Pride. Suzanne, yes. how are you feeling today? I'm elated. Once again, look, we did it. We did it. I mean, the parade just started. How are you feeling? What are your thoughts? What does it mean for you to be here again this year today on Market Street? It's overwhelming, and it's just my heart's full, and I just want to say trans rights are human rights, and this is what this year we've got to say, but I'm, it's so beautiful to be out here with everyone. And it's put together so well. I mean, we've only had one or two people go by so far. We have 200 plus floats here and the energy. It's the energy is overwhelming. Like I say every year to go down Market Street in front of San Francisco with this bunch is it's just the best. For those maybe not watching or being here in San Francisco today but watching from somewhere else, what do you have to say to those people watching now? I have to say there's hope. Just like me watching as a little kid in Kentucky, there's hope. If you get to San Francisco, you can find your people, you can be who you are and you can love who you love. I love that, Suzanne. Suzanne, it's always a pleasure seeing you happy pride thank you to abc and everything you do for us thank you Drew. thank you love you all I better run and catch up. Suzanne, go run. Of course, we love working with SF Pride. We are the exclusive media partner with them. They are such a lovely bunch, Reggie. And she's just here having an amazing time. So I hope everybody watching at home knows. If you can't find hope where you are right now, San Francisco, it's a beautiful place to be and live freely. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I moved to San Francisco about five years ago from Illinois. I went to school in Missouri, and I, you know, it was the first time that I really saw a trans community, and it inspired me to to find myself in in transition. And I'm so happy to be here, and just it is such a privilege to be able to live in this space where there is community and there is joy, and there are people, there are trans folks that you know have a voice. It's really, really special and necessary. Yeah, for those who don't know, Cal has been an athlete like the whole life, mm -hmm. and is is trans masculine non-binary and has been working to include non-binary athletes in races across the country it kind of started with beta breakers here in san francisco mm -hmm. yep. and moved on to the san francisco marathon and then you're in boston this year yeah absolutely it was amazing i mean the first time that the boston marathon had a non-binary category it just feels like a huge huge win especially with all the rhetoric going around right now about uh, trans folks in sports it's nice to have kind of a kind of counter narrative to that that is all about non-binary and trans folks accessing movement and joy which we deserve and we are lucky to have you cal yeah. so lucky to be here on this stage but also just in the community yeah so thank, thank you, you. Uh, more conversation with our wonderful guest host today and of course we'll be looking along the street as all these just come down marcus street this morning and we will be right back
Deutsche. All right, much pride across America here from San Francisco. This party's just getting started. More here on Pride Across America on ABC News Live right after this. Here is part of the Stonewall Bar, but there were three of them, one in each corner and one in the center. And if you can tell the prices, champagne, champagne $1.25. Then there was also another stand we had that had Pat's Blue Ribbon and Rango beer, because those were the beers at the time. I would like to just live simply and be myself. And a lot more, like, empathy to people who are different. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. I came out of jail with a plan. I was going to put every piece of energy I had into music. Give it up for Jelly Roll! If I wasn't a musician, I'd be dead. This was my best bet to really have an impact. <laughs> I'll cry with you. Who would have thought I could help people? I needed help, you know? I still need help. Somebody save me. I love you. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? <laughs> Can I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. The ultimate game of deception is back. Welcome to Claim to Fame. Season 10! Twelve A-lister relatives will compete to keep their famous family a secret. I'm coming for all of you. I'm lying about everything. Oh. You can't trust anybody here. Can you guess who's related to who? I think he's related to Janet Jackson, Harrison Ford, Gal Gadot, and Hathaway. Your celebrity relative is... She's screaming, she's screaming, she's screaming. Claim to Fame premieres June 26th on ABC and stream on Hulu. I came out of jail with a plan. I was going to put every piece of energy I had into music. Give it up for Jelly Roll! If I wasn't a musician, I'd be dead. This was my best bet to really have an impact. <laughs> I'll cry with you. Who would have thought I could help people? I needed help, you know? I still need help. Somebody save me. I love you.
Philly, New York City Pride March is underway. Um, we're not having any fun, are we? <laughs> not at all. I mean, not listen, at all. we've been dancing. We've been looking at everything out here. Unbelievable. The, the, how many people have showed up for this, yes. right? Yeah. And I just love hearing all the remixes. Like, music is such a huge part of the festivities, but the remixes from Renaissance and hip hop and, and country and Britney Spears all mixed into one, it's just been an awesome auditory experience. Yeah. You know what I love? The, the Met Opera, the Metropolitan yes. Opera. Oh, yes! I yes. mean, they were unbelievable. They were rolling yes. around. They did a full opera performance yes. on one of the floors. Yes. This is unbelievable. I can't even believe what's going on. This is nuts. <laughs> People are singing, they're dancing, it's gay anthems. I feel gayer now than I did 20 minutes ago. <laughs> you know, I was going to say something about it, you know, something about your glow. Well, you got the costume change. He went pink, everybody. Look at I that. I did, I did. We and told him that he was going to be changing with these shirts. And then, when I get over there, <laughs> my, my son threw shade because I said, oh, I should duck walk. And he was like, can knees still? And oh. I was like, how dare you? <laughs> I, I did do the duck walk, but I needed help up. I did need help. You don't want to do it right now, a little bit? No, oh, oh, oh. Let me see if I can still get down. Hold on. Right. Right. There we go. All right, Jesus, take the wheel. There we go. <laughs> What the heck are you doing? Let's just try. Okay, I'll do it. Yeah, the whole time it's the best I can do. This it's the best I can do. <laughs> Too much fun out here. You got two thumbs up from your side. All right, see? <laughs> see, there we go. There no we more go. shade. No more shade. You have any Ben Gay? This is huh? You have any Ben Gay? <laughs> You're going to need something strong for, like, uh, stretching those muscles that I way. Think if you're ever going to need Ben Gay, Pride would be it. Yeah, it's a little too wild here, so let's turn it over to our friends at WABC. <laughs> Sam and Lauren covering it all here let's in go, New York go, at the go. Pride Parade, the Pride March. Take a look at this. <laughs> You radiate love. Tell me about where you're from. I'm from Norwalk, Connecticut. Welcome. Is this your first Pride March? It is. I love it. It's my first. I love it. What are you, what are you loving about it? I love the love, the people, the spirit, the vibes, this, everything. Norwalk in the house. Norwalk in the house. Yes, yes. Hello, hello. Look at you. Happy, smiling. What do you think? It's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. I like it. I love it. Thank you. You keep loving it. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna get down there. I see a marching band coming. I think that has my name all over it. Sam, I'm gonna toss it back to you. I got some dance in it. <laughs> I, I think you need a baton and you can lead the band. What oh, do you think? It is so much fun there. Kimberly and I, a couple years ago, were down on the streets. And I know you've done it too. Yeah. That's the fun part of this game. That is where all the is. energy is. Yeah, and it you, really is. those wardrobes, those costumes, the spirit. So fun. I want to say that the Trevor Project was right behind us we moments did ago. Just see that. Their mission is to end suicide among LGBTQ youth uh, by providing 24-7 support. Oh, and look. Look at who the that Disney. is. It's the Disney. It's Disney. I want to say thank you to our company, the Walt Disney Company, who owns Channel 7, by the way, and who has always been a proud ally to our community and really taking some hits for it. So thank you. Yeah. I love my company. A little bit of controversy down yeah. south, yeah. but right here in New York City where they just passed us all smiles. They're they're holding a banner that says, we are magic. Uh, they are the entire group. Disney Theater Productions, everybody walking on by. Well, she is a singer yeah. and an actress who got her start playing Allie in Disney's Austin and Allie. And she was one of the five original classmates in Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? No, I'm not. <laughs> but most importantly, she has 10 million followers on Instagram. Is that so all? It seems that she's doing everything right, not only acting, but on social media. Uh, next up, our performer, Laura Morano, taking on the stage as a uh, performance. The, what's the song? The yeah, Valley? The Valley. Here she comes.
Big thank you to iHeart Media's Laura Morano, who was on the iHeart Z100 float earlier, along with Jade Starling from Pretty Poison. And by the way, no one's rocking a blue bodysuit like that. Yeah. That is amazing. <laughs> hey, if you joined us today because you were looking for ESPN on ABC's coverage of the WNBA Washington Mystics at New York Liberty, it's now airing on My9 right now. But I say why change? Because I promise you, this is amazing what you're about to see here. There is more to come from the New York City Pride March, including a very awesome ballroom folk dance performance from the House of Basquiat, led by the group's house father, Deshaun. Wesley. Everybody's walking the streets and ready to perform. What a party. I know, so much, huh? and we don't want the partying to stop just because, no. you know, so let's go to San Francisco where they are also partying. Hey, guys. specifically to serve underserved folks. So they, this is something that they were, were raised to do, so the company was created specifically for this, and I'm happy to see them. <laughs> we should also mention, because I've done stories on this, that Kaiser Permanente was one of the first partners to really spread the word and the prescriptions for PrEP, mm, which is the medication yeah. that prevents people yeah. from getting HIV. Yep. So yep. the amount of work that has been done by Kaiser Permanente for the LGBTQ population cannot really be overstated. And you, you heard Cal earlier say, and also Pearl talked about the uh, affirming healthcare that they've received Come from Kaiser Permanente. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go over to Jovina Fortson. She Jovina. is live and bringing all of the energy this morning. Hi, Jovina. Hi, okay, so we are with Augustine from BMO, and we actually have the whole BMO team right down there. situation retrofitted out for this parade augustine why is it so important for you all to be here well you know we're super happy to be here and celebrate freedom and love and the beautiful city of san francisco we've been here in this san francisco parade as bank of the west for years and this year is really special to us because we're now part of bmo bmo is a north american bank super committed to zero barriers to inclusion in fact you might have heard we announced earlier this week a half a million dollar donation to the san francisco lgbt center for youth and financial services inclusion programs so super happy to be here flying our new flag Love it. Okay, now you got to tell me what's been the highlight so far for you 
for Pride today? Well, you know, we're super happy to have such a great turnout. You saw our crew just a couple seconds ago. This is a super nice group of people. Everybody works in the Bay Area, is part of this community, and feels super strongly about zero barriers to inclusion. So this is an important day for all of us. Beautiful, Augustine. You crushed that. Hit all the points, okay? And there's a whole crew of people taking pictures right behind us. She is the parade queen, honey. Oh, my goodness. She is parade queen. I feel like Jobina is a parade. She is a, you know she's what a walking I mean? parade, my friend. That looks okay. like coming on. Y'all, this is one of my favorite contentions in the parade. Is it, it is our friends at Alaska Airlines. I love them so much. It's, oh, and they're cute, too. It's a non-stop day for I see it. Okay. I see it, honey. It's All a right. non-stop ride, a non-stop flight with Alaska Airlines. Oh, they've got Nikki Jizz. They've got Paju Monroe. Oh, yes. There's their Nikki. Club. Oh, wow. What's up, Reggie? Let's go, Shadow. Let's go. So beautiful. Yes. Look at Nikki. I'm not giving a show, honey. <laughs> So in case you don't know, Nikki just won Drag Queen of the Year. Yes. Let's go. And she just celebrated Red her Mace. third year with Reparation, which is an all-black drag show. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. oh, the choreography. They got a choreography. Oh, here Incredible. they go. This is it. This is oh, what Jovina right. was showing us earlier. <laughs> we got front row seats, too. Oh, my. <laughs> Look, when flight attendants are involved, you know it's going to be a <laughs> stopping, honey. Yeah. There we go. Oh, yes. There you go. Boom. I got, got another van. <laughs> I love it. Is there another one? Oh, do you have a gift? Oh, yes. Oh, oh no. yes. Yes. Fans we love Sweet it. double fanning. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, the double fanning. You got it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Okay, Pearl. Look, this look, 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 Pearl. Part two. Yes. You're doing it. I, I'm getting better. You're learning. Oh, You're growing. It's beautiful. It's beautiful on both sides, too. Oh, look, it's Cheer SF, everyone. Now, you oh, know, Cheer SF amazing. knows how to put on a show. They are so good. Cheer SF is one of my favorite city <laughs> They will pull a stunt. Woo! Yes. I thought about joining Cheer SF once upon a time. Oh, you'd be great. SF Pride Board President Wing Bam is a member of Cheer SF, but this year, of course, he's with the board. Sacramento <laughs> Happy Pride! Oh, did they say Cheer San Diego Extreme? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, they did. Oh, I love that! <laughs> they brought out all of their cheer they friends. Look so good. That's the sack cheer thing. Oh, sack cheer is here too. Oh, amazing. Yeah. I just ate a bubble. <laughs> <laughs> now, what is this next thing to Oh, okay. Now, okay. Oh, if you were worried about oh. wearing a short sleeve shirt, just know that people are out here in Speedos. <laughs> right. So, they Mr. Those are the doctors, Pearl. It's are the those, doc the doctors? those are the doctors. They're, They're lying. Doctors. Those are the doctors. I'm <laughs> doctor me, honey. <laughs> oh, we're about to have a stunt. Please get this stunt on camera. Oh, yes. Okay, here we go. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, I wanted to be a flyer so bad. <laughs> Amazing. That was so good. Oh, <laughs> the flipping. Wow. Yes. And there is no net. <laughs> oh. I love a stunt. I love a stunt. All right, Pearl, here come your doctors. There's my here, doctors right here. here. Doctors. My doctors, honey. Mr. What, what Mr. is, what is? Okay. Oh. Prep delivered. Okay, I see, I see, I see. Yes, it's we delivered. love it. delivered, all right, honey. Well, <laughs> we're up now. <laughs> we are up now. We are up now. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs coffee when you have the Mr. Misters? <laughs> what? They'll deliver right to your door. <laughs> I'm not sure what, what else they're delivering to your door, Pearl, but... As long as they've got the right address, it's okay. <laughs> as long as they've got the right address, it's okay. <laughs> it's pride, what can I say? I know.
Reese Cyclops is coming right on. Uh, there is. There's a big Cyclops kind of trend that's coming down right trans now. Cyclops. It is it giving is. trans Cyclops. Reese Cyclops. This is the SF Public Health and is being led by their Reese Cyclops float. Ah. Supporting trans youth and then the SM, SF MTA Zero Emissions, followed by the Laguna Honda bus carrying patient staff and loved ones. Oh. Beautiful. It's these balloon backpacks for me. I don't there even know you what you call them. Amazing. It's like a sea urchin balloon. <laughs> Woo! You are watching the SF Pride Hello. Parade on ABC7, and we will be right back. Hello, always me. I'm Nisi Nash, wishing everybody. Pride Parade brought to you by ABC7 Chicago. And here comes the Chicago Pride Guard. The group is an honor guard made up of LGBTQ plus members and allies participating in multiple parades throughout the year, waving those beautiful, colorful silks. Aren't they pretty? And they don't drop them either. No. Okay. You, see, you gotta be careful. You say that. Yeah. 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 What happened on it? <laughs> Beautifully done. Oh, that was a good catch. And, and that was an even better pickup. Did you see that strike? Yeah. Yes. That was, what was that, like pop and lock back? Yeah, nice the way to do it. Pop, lock, and drop it down. That's your great reference. <laughs> oh, my. What are we here? out here? Who are we here? We want to take a moment now to welcome our viewers from around the country. Remember, we're not just being watched here in Chicago, we are being watched across the United States on ABC News Live and Hulu and America. Chicago is thrilled to be with you here today celebrating the LGBTQ plus community, pride, inclusion, and equality. Welcome, America, Chicago. We do it right for Pride here. And we're starting off with diamonds. That's Steve Quick Jeweler. It's a jewelry store in Lincoln Park, featuring designer jewelry and engagement rings. Certain people at home should be listening. I think that might have been an inside message for someone. That's the let's let's see if there. we've captured the viewers. Sweet uh, sweet yes, and Brian here's God. another sweet entry. Get that? Yeah, Forever yeah, Candy is. is a leading distributor of numerous iconic candy and cookie brands. They produce more than two million pieces of iconic lemonhead candy every day and more than 140 million bags of famous Amos cookies annually. In one year, they produced 38 million nerd ropes. That's enough for every citizen of New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago to have two each. Ooh, wow. Let's start passing them out. <laughs> right? Where are they? <laughs> I think that they're in those bags that they're carrying ah, there. We need to be out there for that, for oh, sure. And well, we, you know what, we need to give a step. giant shout out to this, to this float right here, Jose. Yeah, this is a center on Halstead. A Disney Spotlight News organization is making a difference every single day in the Chicago community. Center on Halstead. Their mission is to advance community and secure the health and well-being of the LGBTQIA plus people of Chicagoland. To learn how you can help, visit centeronhalstead.org. The Center on Halstead, proud of their legacy of advocacy, support, and educational services, which uh, are the same services that help form the core of the center's programming way back when. They saved many, many lives. Absolutely. Wonderful organization, great center, great resource for the community. You walk in, they've got their pamphlets yeah. laid out, mm -hmm. and then when you're done doing whatever it is you got to do over there, you hop on over to Whole Foods, grab a smoothie, and you're <laughs> on your way for the day. <laughs> And it's a, you're talking about the ultimate safe space, though. Yeah, yeah. you're not the kidding. The center on Halstead. Everything you need is right there. Broadway in Chicago. Here are my people. Oh, yes. Broadway in Chicago. Oh, I love look at all those fans. <laughs> oh, I love, love, love Broadway in Chicago. Beetlejuice going up. We have Hades Town in town right now. I see the banner for Hamilton. Hamilton coming back to Chicago this fall. 
well, can't you know, wait for it. MJ I, playing here recently is. as well. Ooh, I'm ready. I do uh, work with him every single week. And they not only are talking about the, the programs and productions that are in progress right now, they are educating the young people just this weekend. They are sponsoring the Jimmy Awards, which recognize high school talent, high school musical theater uh, kids from all over the country gathered in New York, sponsored by our very own Broadway in Chicago. And look at these beauties, Asians and Friends Chicago. Asian and Friends Chicago is an official blog that has been supporting gay Asian communities since 1984, and they were in inducted in the LGBTQ Hall of Fame in 2010. They have more than 250 members and hold regular fundraisers to support local AIDS awareness campaigns. They host and participate in a wide variety of activities, and their mission is to bring gay people together, to develop, develop a greater understanding of Asian culture, as well as to help other Asian Americans in the LGBTQ community find space and belonging in Chicago. And one of the groups with them is Tricone Chicago, a registered non-for-profit for queer South Asians and their families, friends, allies, and community. Now we have the faith communities coming through. I see Grace Baptist Church there. Mm -hmm. Actually, Chicago Coalition welcoming churches, uh, a collaboration of churches and other ministries in the Chicago metropolitan area, which welcome and affirm people of all orientations and gender identities. Their two main goals are to spread the message of LGBTQ inclusion across the Chicago metro area, mindful that a positive message about sexual and family diversity is a gift to all people. And they seek to connect the leaders, the members, and guests of partner churches for fellowship and education, and thus enabling the support and research sharing for the practices of the faithful welcoming churches of all faiths. It's so beautiful watching them from mm -hmm. this vantage point. Every one of those signs being held up yeah. represents a different congrega congregation, different church, different chapel, uh, you know, and to see them all together. And look how far back they stretch. Exactly. The message they are sending here is you belong in our faith right. community. That's right. God loves you too. And they are leading with love. They are here today in full effect. There are whole families in this in this uh, in this group, look at them having a ball. I did a story with the Archdiocese a few years ago where we were profiling millennial women who are becoming nuns. And so I spent like a week in the convent, and I'm telling you, the sisters still reach out. They still they're still spreading the love. It it was a nice environment just to kind of see my yeah. assumptions kind of flipped over of what oh, that's someone a nice like me in the church, yeah. would, you know, what reaction would it cause? They still didn't hit you with a ruler. No, uh, no, no. Years. These the nuns are new age, Jose. <laughs> <laughs> the new age nuns. How fun. We are glad to be here. The sun is out. We had a little bit of rain here in Chicago for a little while, but now it's out. We, we're looking for that rainbow, but we see it all over the place right now because we are at Montrose and Broadway here in Chicago. 52nd annual Pride Parade, one of the very largest in this country. Our crowd moving again. Ooh, I like that Canadian maple leaf on Did that you woman's see that? arm. Yeah. I see my maybe it's a compatriot. <laughs> there you go. I mean, that was a shout out to you directly, Tanya. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Me and all the other Canadians here today. <laughs> I love that the rain did not deter this crowd oh, at no all. One no bit. one left. It's a good metaphor for what it's like living queer. You know, the storms are going to come and go, but we're going to persevere. Look we're at you. There's always, always a rainbow at the end, oh baby. Oh, my oh, God. God. The wisdom. <laughs> Cody Whitman. <laughs> <laughs> J.P. Morgan Chase Bank coming through right now, earning a perfect 100 on the 2022 Corporate Equality Index, being designated one of the best places to work for LGBT equality.
Okay, back here in Chicago, and we're just, we're heating up on the streets. Yeah, and nice. I've got a great guest, a community physician, Dr. Maya Green, here, and someone who helps bridge the gap for LGBTQ plus community to find health care. Yeah. Uh, you do this here in Chicago. Yes. You are representing always, but how does a day like this, especially so good for the community, feel? Well, as you know, part of healing is hope, right? So days like this give us hope strength, resilience. It's beautiful. All love out here. Shout out to New York. But it's all love out here. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Yes, of course. And so I w was reading about your mom's, uh, how she raised you and yes. what she told you about pride. Yes. Please tell us what she taught you. Well, my mom always said, Maya, if you don't celebrate yourself, no one will. And look what has happened. Look at 1969 Stonewall. Yeah. Since then, we got less than 3% of baby boomers openly identifying. And then if you look, we have 4.2% of Gen X, 10.5% of millennials. And then 21% of wow. Gen Z are out loud and proud. And what that shows is representation matters. So mm -hmm. the more of us that are out loud and proud, we encourage others to do the same. Representation matters, but then it's what do you do next? And you've yes. been working on that your whole career. Yes. Helping people, especially in the queer community, with access to HIV and AIDS. Yeah. So tell us what we've been through, where we're at, and where we're going. When yeah, it comes so to that. what we've been through, and so what we've seen is more people that talk about disparities in L uh, LGBTQ health and in HIV, more, the more we talk about it, the more it's out there, the more we move from equity talk to action, right? Mm -hmm. And so what I'm seeing now is the need to move into care for our black and brown communities everywhere. It's part of my passion and it's something I'm excited to do and it's an honor. And it's not only people living with HIV, it's communities impacted with HIV because as we know, being out loud and proud and there is important, but there are people that don't identify that in any way that are living with HIV so I'm honored to be part of the solution for our community when it comes to you know queer health care yeah. especially gender affirming care is mm -hmm. under fire so where well, are we at and how can allies help where we're at 23 percent of the LGBTQ community um, identifies having poor health only 14 percent of our non LGBTQ community um, identifies living with poor, um, poor health so we're at a point where we cannot let those of us who want to um, start fighting Fires, you know, breathe fires, put gasoline on the fires. We cannot let this stop us. Mm -hmm. Every time we are out there living our truth, whether it's in the boardroom, whether it's in Congress, whether it's here, mm -hmm. every time we stand against that, we move the needle. And so I'm, I'm, again, excited to be part of that. So now we have the action, but if you had a young person or even an old person at this yeah. point that has seen a headline, that has seen legislation that's come down lately, um, how do you give them hope and what do you say to them? Well, I say look at history. Every time we're on the verge of something great, there are a couple of us that want to hold us back. And it's because of fear. It's because we, are, those of us that want to hold us back, are nervous, like what happens to me on the other side of greatness? I would encourage them to do what we did in Stonewall, do what we did in so many other instances in history, is and live your truth, be an example. Because the only way we'll know that all of us are okay on the other side is if we make them experience it. I'm gonna live by your mama's words. Hey. Nobody's gonna be proud for you. You gotta be proud for yourself. That's right. Hi, Mama. <laughs> Hi, Mama. <laughs> Thank you so much. Dr. Maya Green, everybody. Thank we'll head you back for to having you. me. What a phenomenal conversation, Ginger. Phenomenal conversation. Thank you, and thank you to Dr. Maya Green. And there is much more ahead as we celebrate pride across America, from New York, from Chicago, from San Francisco. It's all coming up after a quick break here. You are watching ABC News Live. Stick around. youth are, are vulnerable and they are at risk of, of bullying, uh, harassment and discrimination and so we really um, need to work to support trans youth and to help them and to nurture them. you're going to get on this show. That's all I'm going to tell you. Yes, Whoopi! This mic on? Can you hear me out there? 
Sarah. Behind the scenes is always a better show. Absolutely. Always. Absolutely. That's what people don't see during the commercial break. Right. They don't. What happened? I had no idea really what I was getting myself into. That day that we walked out, I, I treasured that day. I just, I couldn't sit there. You're doing good, Joy. You're doing good. Oh, yeah, baby. It was crazy. Behind the Table. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7 straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live America's number one streaming news. When I got sent to Idaho to cover the murders of four college students, it was a story that didn't make any sense. Four students stabbed to death in their beds while two roommates were home. You got to think to yourself, okay, who's the target and how many people would a man go through to get to his target? I'm Kana Whitworth with ABC News. This is the story of savage murders, a determined small town police force, and a scholar of crime. This is The King Road Killings, a new podcast from ABC Audio. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Bring, your Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. I'm Ginger Z here in Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Francisco. What are some of the things that you've noticed so far? I mean, this is my first San Francisco Pride, and I gotta tell you, they do it big here. This yeah. is a blockbuster parade, bigger than anything I've ever seen. I gotta tell you, there's a lot of California pride here. I Absolutely. mean, this is the state that, of course, uh, was the first to legalize same-sex marriage, ban conversion therapy. This city, the first to elect an openly gay uh, politician, Harvey Milk, of course. You see a lot of that pride in this crowd with these signs. Uh, a lot of California love. I'm also struck by the families in this parade, small kids, kids, uh, kids of all ages, and the multicultural diversity that's on display. And here. not just from within the LGBTQ plus community, right, but there are straight parents who are here with their children to just kind of be part of this cultural event. This year does have that dash of protest restored back into it, unlike certain years past. And when we talk about allyship, that's so important to kind of bridge those gaps and to just see each other as humans. But even within the LGBTQ plus community, we've learned a lot about the different life experiences that we each have. Absolutely. And you talk about allyship. There's a wonderful woman over here holding a big sign that says proud mom mm. of a gay son. It's so touching to me to see the parents that are out here expressing some Support, and a lot of support for the trans community this year in light of those laws. So it's a big, it's a big deal. And let's go to New York uh, with Geo and company. Uh, guys, over to you in New York City. Hey guys! Oh, it just looks like so much fun out there, yes. and I love the pink dinosaurs. I know. I 
love a unicorn, the horn, you know. Anyway. And, and I know you, you as a dog owner, you were just like puppies. really happy to see the puppies. <laughs> All right, why don't we go to our friends over at ABC7? Yes, ABC7 yeah. Bay Area reporter Jabina Fordson is on the parade route. Jabina, how is the party there? company girl, okay? We are with the Walt Disney Company contingent. Here we've got ABC7 represented in San Francisco, Lucasfilm, Pixar, you name it. The crowd is out here. Give it some love all day long. We've got everybody, their families. We've got the drag queens down the street as well. It's been such an incredible day. And I want to pan around here because we are approaching Market Street. That's where everything goes down here in San Francisco. Check it out. What's happening? We've got accepted, everyone is included, um, and that everyone's voices matter. Just because you don't understand it or you don't believe in it doesn't mean it's not here for us. It's America, and everyone has a place here. So thank you. Amen. All right. He did that, didn't he? Okay, so we come down this way. We have the bubbles flying. We have the families. It has been so much fun, and the sun is officially out here in San Francisco because in June here, we like to call it June Bloom. We had all this fog over the area. It has opened up with all the color been so much fun. Send it back to you guys. Hey, Jovina, I gotta ask you, I mean, you are strutting down those streets. Yes, walking. You are really doing it. Hey, who, oh, you got NASA. You got NASA over there, don't you? Okay, Jovina. Oh, I guess she can't I, she, hear us. I was you, here for the walk, though, man. She oh my gosh, she was strutting. really. Yeah, she was. <laughs> but it's so loud there, she couldn't hear us. Listen, there is much more ahead coming yes. up here because we're going to be going to San Francisco. We're going to be going back to Chicago. It is obviously still going on here in New York with Pride Across America. More right here on ABC News Live after a quick break. Please do stay with us. Look at these three parties. Yes, me dancing. <laughs> What's up, guys? This is Casey reporting live from beautiful Tempe, Arizona. Arizona is such a beautiful place. I'm so grateful to be able to celebrate Pride Month with my family. Hulu believes that Pride never stops. So no matter if you're in Tempe or not, happy Pride. Let's go. Whenever news breaks. The crush of families here in Poland. Here in Kentucky, no match for the tornado. From Monterey Park, California, on the ground in Ukraine. Reporting from Uvalde, Texas. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. From Kathmandu, Nepal. In Truckee, California, covering record snowfall. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. Here at this airport in Tampa, it's already shut down. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Reporting from Jerusalem. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. All right, here we go. You ready? 
Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lindsay Davis. We begin tonight here in Buffalo, London, in Alaska. Uvalde, Kentucky, and Poland, Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. Did you ever have a conversation about an abortion? Is she lying? Do you have a political aspiration? Absolutely. You ready for this? Go! You're going to deliver a show that will be remembered forever. Ooh, the fresh on me. You are just <laughs> a tough, bad <laughs> So much happening these days, it's hard to keep up. Things change hour by hour, minute by minute. The historic weather that's now unfolding. The worries on Wall Street. We're bringing you the right now. Been a nationwide teacher shortage. The right now look at the day ahead. An alert this morning for dog owners and the key takeaways from the biggest stories. World News Now and America This Morning, America's number one early morning news. Today does feel a little different. Early mornings on ABC News Live. America here on ABC News Live. The party is underway here in New York City. Our next guest sings about outlaw, outlaw love for her new EP and joins us now live at Pride. It's country singer, songwriter, Brooke Eden. Welcome and happy Pride to you. Happy Pride you. to you. Amazing. Can we see her eyes? Can we see the beautiful makeup? Yeah, the makeup Rainbow. is amazing. Yes, Rainbow everywhere. <laughs> yes, gotta represent. Absolutely. This is your first time at a Pride as a married woman. Woman and married lady, how does it feel? Oh, it feels amazing. I mean, I got to marry my best friend and better half, and so getting to have that and, and it be legal in the United States is amazing. Absolutely. You really lay it all out there on the EP and the music video for Outlaw Love. Why was it so important to you, especially as a country artist, yeah. to live your truth? Oh my gosh, you know, in country music, there's just not a lot of representation for the LGBTQ plus community. So it was really important for me to be able to show representation and be visible, not just back here, but here, just like every other country artist is allowed to do with their partner. So it was really important for me to be out loud. Were you worried how you would be perceived or what people would think of you? I was, yeah. I mean, my wife and I stayed in the closet for five years because we were told by people in the industry that it would ruin my career to be out and so yeah it was really scary but at the end of the day I knew that I was making myself and my entire community uncomfortable by trying to make other people comfortable but at the end of the day what are we really doing and we are not getting to be ourselves and have you seen the country music community sort of open its arms and hearts to you and I'm sure there's still room to grow of course very much so. I mean, country music is supposed to be three quarts in the truth, and I'm finally telling mine, and it's been amazing to watch other people get to tell their truth as well, and just watch this kind of like queer country dance party just start, you know? <laughs> <laughs> all right, now, Brooke, first of all, you are best dressed among the five of yes. us, so yes. I mean, you guys look The fringe, the rainbows, I'm oh, like so awesome. jealous. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now, Brooke, I gotta ask you a question. You know, a lot of us, you know, we, we read the news and we see what's going on, but we you don't live in Tennessee. You live in Tennessee. What's it like on the ground there, and how do you stay inspired when it's, it's under fire? Yeah. Um, well, with the drag band that did, they, they tried, but they lost. It didn't work, so it is unconstitutional, and they ruled it that way. So uh, there was a few months there where it was very scary just to live in that kind of hateful environment, but there's such a, I mean, Nashville, where I live in, in Tennessee, is so beautiful and full of so much love. Yes, it is. I love Nash Vegas, I guess, as they call it. <laughs> yes! <laughs> um, when you think about the journey that you went through, you just talked about the five years in the closet, and now here you are on ABC News Live celebrating your truth. <laughs> if there's any message you can give to young people watching right now, what would it be? I would say to stand in your truth. 
I know that it can be really hard, especially with the world and where we are right now with a lot of anti-LGBTQ legislation. But when you are yourself, it inspires other people to be themselves. And so I would just say, try as hard as you can, as long as you feel safe to live in your truth. You and your wife have been really open about this idea of having a family one day and about your egg freezing process. Yeah. Are we gonna see you with a little one out oh. there? We just went through egg, egg freezing. My wife went, I go in, in a month to do my own egg freezing. So yeah, I mean, as soon as I met her, I was just like, wow, you're such a caring, nurturing person. And I really wanted to build a family with her from the very beginning. So I'm so excited to have that soon one day, yeah. You know, I wonder, seeing where you are now, <laughs> is there something you would tell your younger self? Oh now? my gosh, yeah. It would be, it's gonna be okay. You know, I, I was so, I was so shame, shameful about, you know, maybe, oh my gosh, wait a second, do, do I, am I, do I have a crush on a girl, you know? And I grew up in a very um, religious background and in, in home and I went to a Christian school and, you know, those are the things that you're taught. But when you take all of the things that you're taught and take all of that away and just know what you know in your heart and in your gut, there is absolutely nothing wrong with loving who you love. So I would say everything's gonna be even more incredible than you could ever dream of. Absolutely. Jeez, Brooke, I'm, I'm inspired. You know, not only are you standing in your truth, you are standing in those boots. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Do we see? Yes. Oh, now we see. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's, it's giving us Dolly, right? Yes. It's giving us oh. Reba, giving us Reba. <laughs> yeah, these boots are made for walking, honey. <laughs> Brooke Eden, thank you so much for the music, for your truth, for your story, and just being your absolutely wonderful self. Thank you so, so much for being here. Thank you for celebrating Pride. Yeah, happy Pride. Absolutely. Thank you happy so much. Pride. Brooke, Brooke, Why Brooke. Do we, yes, let's go back to our friends over at WABC as they continue their Pride coverage here in New York City because the party in is very much oh. underway right now. There you go, DC's different drummers now here in New York City. Let's see what WABC is. Portuguese. Beijo, kisses, 
and towel. Yeah. <laughs> and so as they shake their way down the parade, yeah. we say, Beju Chow, everybody, Beju Chow. <laughs> I knew Vo. I think that was Gate. Like the airport gate. Very well. That could be it, sure. I told you, I told yeah. you where my Portuguese is. <laughs> you already heard my French. Uh. <laughs> we're we're going to take a break now from the Chicago Pride Parade, and we'll be back with more in just a moment. <laughs> and it really inspires me. Tell me a little bit about being here right now and how you feel inspired. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm happy I'm here with my kids, my house kids. I'm able to celebrate this pride with them. This is my first kind of pride in New York City celebrating with them. So it's an opportunity for us to celebrate. And balming, doing nothing but growing. So I'm able to grow with my house and perform with my house. So I'm excited about that. We are looking forward to that. You were quoted in Harper's Bazaar saying that you began to feel at home in the West Village in New York City. You started at 14, right? Yes, I, I came out at a very young age. But, you know, again, I was just trying to find a place to be around people who walked and talked like me and act like me. And I found that, like, at a very young age. But I, I went back ever since. And, like, again, I, I found my own chosen family, you know? Talk about uh, how legendary has helped a ballroom uh, voguing have a moment right now in pop culture. I say definitely on Legendary, what it did for opportunity for different houses was have, we, we had a chance to be next to our stars, the people we look up to, the people who we celebrate sometimes, the music that we play sometimes in our community. So it gave many people in my community the opportunity to sit on the stage of bright lights and have that time to shine. And, and you know, you know, many shows have done that for us as well, too. We like Pose as well, you know, and again, so it, it just does nothing but give us the opportunity to, to stretch, reach, and be just as amazing as we are for the many years that we have been. And you are amazing. I know this is a celebratory feeling today during the march, but there's also a lot to fight for. What are you personally hoping to fight for, and what do you want to see change? Well, I'm always like, be the change you want to see in the future, you know, and the only way to do that is to apply it. And so this is why I created my own house, because there was something that, you know, was shifting in the ballroom community that I wanted to change. And, you know, I wanted my house to be a ballroom thing and also a mainstream thing as well, too. Like, we got them to do performance, like we're going to see a performance tonight. So just hit, helping it change and grow and be the change you want to see. Sean, thank you so much. By the way, can you look at his uh, umbrella? Look at this umbrella, because... No one has a better umbrella than Deshaun. I have a blue and white one, at, you know, for ABC7, which I appreciate. But the Working rainbow, out, yeah, because it, it is slightly drizzling, enough to make my hair frizzy, but you seem nonplussed. Oh, not pressed by it. I got my colors holding me down. You're awesome. You're good. <laughs> and we're going to have a performance. Uh, does the performance have a name? Oh, uh, no, you'll just be know? seeing the performance from myself in the House of Basquiat. Can't wait. Can't wait for that. Looking forward to it. Sam, we're going to send it back to you. I'm going <laughs> to... Wait, somebody tell, somebody tell Deshaun to call Audible. Yeah. And I need him to be reading bedtime stories. That voice. Is it uh, not great? I need him to talk me to sleep. I beautiful. so agree with Isn't that. Isn't that beautiful? Wait, and I love... Be the change you want to see. Absolutely, right? yes. And it that umbrella. Yes, yes. Well, we do need... To, let's take a quick look at the radar. Let's see how close oh, we're going to get to this. Oh. So we've been watching all the storms. I know it looks worse than it is. It's because pretty, it's in though. New Jersey. But you can see Staten Island right there. It's big and vivid on the bottom of the screen. And then New York, if you just follow that, that's where the city is, Union City. All these storms are tracking well to our west. Okay. So in northern New Jersey on into the Hudson Valley, you just need to be watching those storms. But for us right now, we have some lighter showers and sprinkles around. We're keeping an eye on that, and we're keeping everybody safe in the boot. It's we so colorful, though. Is that a storm yeah. or is that Shea Coulee? <laughs> <laughs> on tour. It kind of goes with it your goes outfit. With the I just yeah. say, I you know, all of you, you're all represented on the radar. Yes, 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 yes. What we do. No, but it's a beautiful day. I'm so glad that the rain held off so that we can come out, celebrate, look beautiful, and then kiki some more. Yes, yeah, and, and let me tell you, I have a secret. What? Someone stole my umbrella oh, to show oh, the tech. Oh, 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 yes. Oh, oh my God. Oh, that's so pretty. See? Come in here. Come right, in here. Right, yeah. Look, see, is this see, a photo listen, op? Talking, it is a photo op because okay. you know what? This yes. is very symbolic. Well, Wait, you got to open it up, Yeah, though. we got to get that. But it's, it's very symbolic because, right. you know what? The LGBTQ rainbow is itself an umbrella. 
that fits all of us underneath it, even our allies. Yeah. So if you want to be loved, protected, and sheltered from the storm and the rain, honey, join the Rainbow Coalition. I'm Preach. all for it. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Can we just tape that and yeah. Right, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. So when we come back, you just saw Deshaun with somebody's rainbow umbrella. But that Vogue <laughs> ballroom dance performance is coming up with the House of Basquiat right here on New York City Pride. Families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Bring your friends. Bring them all. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. This is ABC News Live Prime. Thanks so much for streaming with us. Live reporting, breaking news, exclusives, award-winning, powerful, eye-opening. ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Streaming weeknights. My son has been missing since March of 2021. I haven't seen or heard from my sons. The kids were gone. It was horrifying. I have no idea if he's alive. Warren thinks he's God, and they think he's God. I want to make this very clear. If the law officials, FBI, doesn't stop Warren, thousands will die. Impact by Nightline, now streaming on Hulu. I came out of jail with a plan. I was going to put every piece of energy I had into music. Give it up for Jelly Roll! If I wasn't a musician, I'd be dead. This was my best bet to really have an impact. <laughs> I'll cry with you. Who would have thought I could help people? I needed help, you know? I still need help. Somebody say I love you. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from New York, I'm Gio Benitez. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back to Pride Across America here on ABC News Live. We have been having 
having way too much fun for a few hours now. At So House Chicago, let's head over to Alex Perez and Ginger Z. Ginger, you have a plane to catch, so you can make it back for Good Morning America. So you have to leave the party a little early. <laughs> Just a little. I have to be that early exit gal because, uh, as you can see, it might be a little tough getting out of this party. It's yeah, going to take a while. a little early, but we've had a good time so Shout far. We've been here dancing, chilling, hanging yeah. out, making friends, taking pictures, it's talking been... about serious stuff, talking about happy stuff. And that's the thing. It's such an honor. I think in the pride parades of past, I you know, each time you get another layer of complexity of what this is about. My cousin, uh, Tamara, who works with the city of Chicago, her wife, Finn, um, I think about them and their new, their little family that lives just down the street here. I'm so proud to be able to be a part of this for my sister, um, for my countless friends. Brad just walked by, my friend that works at CVS, and it really has given me a lot of like full heart for the day to know that we can do this and then talk about how far this community has come, but as an ally, put a spotlight and a highlight on the equality that is not yet there. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to make sure before you leave town to tell you and thank, to thank you for being an ally, but not just for being an ally, for being a fierce ally, because allyship means a lot of things, but it's a lot more than just like love is love or a slogan or yeah. saying you tolerate or you're okay with. It's about standing up and speaking out yeah. when it's important and you've done that and you continue to do that. So I'm as an ally, learning. I want to give you a hug and Please say do. thank you. Thank, thank you for you. doing that. Please do. And Nikita, you know what? Everybody's learning and everyone's learning together and that's part of the actual love and joy that we can bring all in one. So I'm grateful that I got to be a part of this, Alex. Thank you for being an incredible co-host. So, and we didn't plan this. No, but it worked out just fine, so I'm not mad about it. No, it worked out. It looks good. And I I know you're leaving, Ginger, but I'm sorry to tell you the party is going to continue okay. even after you leave. <laughs> if I can get out of here. <laughs> We're still going to have a good time. As you make your way out of here, Thank we want to make sure we send uh, all of our streamers over to our friends in San Francisco who are covering the parade there. Let's take a look at what's happening out in California. Ginger, thank you so much. You know, I am not a meteorologist, but today here in San Francisco, there is a 100% chance of bubbles. Bubbles, but we got sunshine. It's breezy. It's great. cool, but people are having a great time. What yes. a crowd out here. And just a few moments ago, a really special guest stopped by. That's right. Where are my uh, drag race fans out there in Streamland? We had Alexis Michelle of All-Star Season 8 stop by. Great conversation. Here's a little bit of what she had to say. Alexis, Michelle, so great to see you. Oh, so wonderful to see you. Happy, Happy Pride. Pride. You're serving it's the community, fabulous. but you're also serving You know, the uh, if I don't look like Pride, I don't know what does. Yeah. <laughs> When's the first time you dressed in drag? Oh my gosh, I mean, I've been playing dress up since I was a little kid, but um, this makes 20 years for me. Wow. 20 years? 20 years. Do you, do you think this? So I was, you know, seven. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fabulous, clearly. Uh, when you were seven. And do you think the, the climate this year around drag makes it a different experience for you? Is this, is, this a, is this a tough year to be in drag out here? Well, tough or not, it is different. I think with the unfounded and really bizarre and diversionary attacks on drag right now, it's bringing drag back to what it was in its early days, mm. which was activism. And so, you know, I had a funny thing in... 2016, when I thought I would be living my drag race dream in a different climate, and then all of a sudden we entered the twilight zone, I said, just add an activist to your job description. And that's what we all have to do now, again, is band together within the queer community, lift each other up, and support each other, fortify each other, um, because this is just, this noise is temporary. This all-star season has been an emotional roller coaster. A little bit of drama in the last episode. What do fans expect? More drama. Oh, great. More drama and more fantastic drag. And I think what's really important, as I said, you know, as a queer community, it's up to us to lift each other up and build each other up. And I think it's important for people who love the show to remember that this is for entertainment's sake and that we are people on the on the on the show and that um just remember it's easier to love than to uh be a keyboard warrior that's for sure yeah. and the, sh the show's been around for for a while now it's so popular yeah. it is, you know it is entertainment but i wonder i mean do you do you see it as having a role in fighting stigma around drag do you think it's had an impact i think what Drag Race has done for drag and for the queer community in general is huge. I think it's brought us, it's brought our stories into 
everybody's living rooms and hearts. And that is the real power of not only Drag Race, but of drag, which is that um, when you're living authentically, you have the power to change people's minds and hearts. And um, I think that really is the impact of the show in, in the best way. We can see your humanity. Absolutely. You auditioned eight times before you picked the ninth, is that yes, right? Yes, on, on season nine I had auditioned eight times, so every every time but for the first season. And um, What a ride for you. What personally. a ride. I mean, and it felt like eight years of my life because creating that audition is very all-consuming. I would imagine. So, yeah, it really did feel like. So what is it like now to be here, you're an all-star in more ways than one? <laughs> And you're at San Francisco Pride. It's amazing. You know, I get to travel the world. I get to meet incredible people. And that's the real gift. And when I hear from young people that being myself, doing this makes them feel OK, then I can, I really have a reason to keep going. What do you, what do you say to parents? You know, there's so much concern out there. In some corners, some of it's legitimate and sincere. But what do you say to parents who are concerned about the influence drag and drag queens would have on their kids? I think that a parent's concern is always legitimate, but to think that this is a threat to your child is misguided. Perhaps you've been told some untruths, and um, really all this is is self-expression. And I think that that's a beautiful thing to teach your child to be themselves. And I think at the end of the day, that's what every parent wants is a happy, healthy child. And um, Authenticity. Authenticity, authenticity wins the day. And it, it really does. That's what this is about. It's so great to be, have you here. Thank you so much for taking the time to come talk to us. Thank happy you. Pride. Happy good luck, Pride. Good luck on the show. Yes. It's so great to have her here. You know, she, she left us a little gift. This is all that's left of her. Scattered around her, San Francisco her, her right now. And our, you know, but it was so much fun to talk yeah. to her. And, and it, uh, you know, the issues that she brought up were just so important for this community. It's an important conversation to have, right? But just acknowledging and respecting the sincerity of concern that some parents may have for her, I think, opens the door for the important conversations that we ought to have, but how we move forward with our best humanity. And if you're watching us from New York City, she's headed back on the red eye tonight. Alexis Michelle is debuting at Joe's Pub on Tuesday and Wednesday this week at public uh, publictheatertickets.org. Uh, you can watch her. Uh, but right now, we got more coverage here in San Francisco. We sure do. So stick with us. We have much more ahead as we celebrate Pride across America. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. I came out of jail with a plan. I was going to put every piece of energy I had into music. Give it up for Jelly Roll! If I wasn't a musician, I'd be dead. This was my best bet to really have an impact. <laughs> I'll cry with you. Who thought I could help people? 
I needed help. You know, I still need help. Somebody save me. I love you. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Can I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. The ultimate game of deception is back. Welcome to Claim to Fame. Season 2! 12 A-lister relatives will compete to keep their famous family a secret. I'm coming for all of you. I'm lying about everything. Oh. You can't trust anybody here. Can you guess who's related to who? I think he's related to Janet Jackson, Harrison Ford, Gal Gadot, and Hathaway. Your celebrity relative is... She's screaming, she's screaming, she's screaming. Claim to Fame premieres June 26th on ABC and stream on Hulu. I came out of jail with a plan. I was going to put every piece of energy I had into music. Give it up for Jelly Roll! If I wasn't a musician, I'd be dead. This was my best bet to really have an impact. <laughs> I'll cry with you. Who would have thought I could help people? I needed help, you know? I still need help. Somebody save me. I love you. Across America here on ABC News Live from San Francisco. I'm Devin Dwyer here with Christian Cordero. And right behind us, you see the San Francisco on the left side of your screen there, the San Francisco lesbian and gay marching band getting ready to kick things off. We're in full swing here. Christian, this has been a pretty extraordinary celebration in the birthplace of the rainbow flag. Fun fact for you if you didn't know it. It's truly historic to be here in San Francisco along Market Street. And we've had so many different groups here. We know our friends over at KGO have been tirelessly covering the parade since it started about 90 minutes ago. So let's go ahead and listen in to their coverage. She is that girl. She is. She is. Oh. She would also say, it's giving. It's giving. And now it's, it's giving, giving under the bubbles. sea. <laughs> it's giving new school uh, Little Mermaid. Yeah. Here, yeah. here comes the San Francisco Gay and Lesbian Freedom Band, the official band I love to of see San it. Francisco. It. Let's take a listen. Do we get up? No, you have to You're stuck to it. your chair. <laughs> Everything breaks right. so we can dance. See, Kamasi get to do it. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. To the left, to the left. <laughs> it takes such skill to be able to do carry that those instruments, play them, and do choreo. While walking, while marching in the right. parade. <laughs> Come on, you better know the choreo. Come on, you better know <laughs> there she the choreo. There we go. There she is. There we go. There we go. Come on, Kamasi. <laughs> Kamasi, go! <laughs> Kamasi's basically in the parade. She, she, right. Led by Michael Wan, the, 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 the drum major. Excellent. Incredible. Incredible. Blow your whistle. Speaking of music, 
Our colleague, Zach Fuentes, is right down the street. He's at Civic Center covering the celebration that's happening there. So after the parade, you can Look see some wonderful shirt. musicians. Hi, Zach. Hello, I think I can hear you guys okay. Yes, we're at Civic Center, the main stage. Oh my gosh, just the sound checks alone have been amazing. Tonight is going to be incredible. It starts started at noon, it's gonna go through six. This is where the party is gonna continue once the parade ends. You can see a crowd is already out here gathering. Right now they're acknowledging the land and the party's only going to continue. Our headliner today is Haley Kiyoko, singer, actress, now best-selling author. Look at these crowds already gathering right now. More and more people coming from the parade, just gradually coming through here for everything that's going on. This is the main stage. There's other stages that we're flanked by right now. Tons of food vendors. A lot of beautiful faces out here, too. A lot of amazing outfits, or lack thereof in some cases. We're just having an excellent time out here. So, again, there's going to be a ton of acts out here. The sound checks have been amazing. Music is going to be great. Haley Kyoko, our headliner. DJ's going to keep playing here in just a second, but a lot of fun out here already, and it's only just beginning. We've been watching the parade on the Jumbotron out here. Looks like you guys have been having fun out there, too, so we're going to send it back to you and have a lot more from here as we continue on in this live stream. Well, Zach, fun thank is you. an understatement. We have been having a blast <laughs> over here, honey. <laughs> and the sun rider. is here. The it sun. feels so good. Oh, my God. You have no idea. We <laughs> also have Miss San Francisco. This is the first time that we have oh, a yes. trans oh, yes. woman representing San Francisco yes. in the Miss California pageant. Amazing. As it should be. Yes. And there's Matt Dorsey. Matt Dorsey. San Francisco supervisor. The second gay supervisor, followed by the third ever supervisor, Joel Ingardio. As Raphael always says, he used to be the only gay supervisor for so long, and now there's three. Okay, and it looks like the San Francisco Zoo is right behind them. Oh, come on, Lizzo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's in a suit and a bike. Mm -hmm. That's bravery. Wow. Turn up the here, music. Here comes, here comes Supervisor Myrna Melgar on a on an e-bike. Oh wow. All okay. right. I promote transport public transportation. All right. <laughs> oh my goodness. You said it's called an e-bike. That's an e-bike. Okay. So she can put it into uh, drive mode. They usually on the hills. go like oh, twenty. Right. Electric. Yeah. Electric. Yeah. Electric. Yeah. Uh -huh. Got you. <laughs> People are here trying to give us business cards and the business whole thing. Right. The pins, girl, uh, like, what are we going to do with those? I, I, Cal almost got taken out by the bees. <laughs> oh, no. Like, oh, no, honey, do you have to talk about me? It's okay. <laughs> we, it's okay. We need Cal to survive. <laughs> right. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> I felt bad for you because the, cause I was like, oh, no, it's okay. And she was like, oh, no, no, no. I didn't want to get hit. Pearl, I haven't talked to you a lot. Uh, I want to remind people about your history in San Francisco because you are a unicorn. You're born in, in San ways. Francisco. Yes, <laughs> in many ways. I was born and raised here in San Francisco. My parents actually met here in San Francisco and... Magic. Um, <laughs> and they had you. And then they had me. This and beautiful I, baby. You know. Filipino. Yeah, bla a little Blasian baby. Yes. <laughs> a little Blasian baby. <laughs> we love that. Um, so I, I stayed here. I almost went to, uh, born and raised here, was going to go to Galileo High School, but then ended up moving to Sacramento and came right back for college and mm -hmm. just never left. Mm -hmm. And now you can find me right by the San Francisco Zoo. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm out right by the beach, honey. Oh, nice. <laughs> what do you love about the city? Th that we have us in it, you know. Yep. There's, if there, if there is one place that you can find family, if you, it, whether it be a new one or one you've known from the past, it's going to be here in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I uh, heard something recently that I thought was really true. Someone said that like LA is where you go to be famous, and San Francisco mm -hmm. is where you go to be yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I've never heard that. I love that. I like yeah. that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's what really separates 
San Francisco makes it special is that it's always been a beacon for people to come here, find themselves, find their tribe, and then also, you know, spread it around and make sure that everyone is included in the party. Yeah, would you say it was pretty easy for you to find your, your tribe here? Yeah, because I think immediately it was welcoming. Yeah. I felt at home right away. I'm glad. And I'm so glad. that, and there's nothing like that feeling right. of being embraced. Right. And I feel like that's the story of everyone who comes, who moves to San Francisco. Yeah, you know. yeah. And I think it'll always be that special place. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, the and sun. the sun comes out as soon as we say that. So. <laughs> Wonderful. It feels great. Just in time, honey. All right, girls. All right, majorettes. <laughs> yes. Oh, they look, oh, yes. We love a good choreography moment. All right, majorettes. Those aren't just, that's not just choreography, Reggie. That is an HBCU tradition. Yes, Those it are is. majorettes. Yes. And, and they are important. And, and I love that the little kids are doing it. My, my two co-anchors are from HBCUs. Oh, so really? They represent, yes, we have a FAMU graduate right here in Kumasi Aaron. Oh. And she's very proud. And then we have a Howard University grad in Javina Fortson. Javina was from Howard. Oh, yeah. yeah. So they are... Kamasi, I'm talking about you and fam you. I don't know if she can hear me, but. <laughs> she on her phone, child. <laughs> I didn't know Jovina went to VHU, Howard University. Sure did. We've got Utopia coming up. It's their 25th an uh, anniversary celebration. Amazing. Now, are these are my Pacific Islander brothers and sisters? Yes, yes. our. Yes, our. thank you, our. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. I love you too. So good to see you. You guys don't. You guys don't understand how many. Oh my goodness, my sister. <laughs> you guys have no idea how many fans Reggie has coming over here, fan girl. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me feel so good. Earlier, someone came by and said, "You were the reason I watched the news." <laughs> wow. Oh. We love our community out here in San Francisco. We're going to make our way into a quick commercial break. More ahead on ABC News Live with our coverage of Pride Across America 2023. <laughs> never know what you're going to get on this show. That's all I'm going to tell you. Yes, Whoopi! This mic on? Can you hear me out there? Behind the scenes is always a better show. Absolutely. Always. Absolutely. That's what people don't see during the commercial break. Right. They don't. What happened? I had no idea really what I was getting myself into. That day that we walked out, I, I treasured that day. I just, I couldn't sit there. You're doing good, Joy. You're doing good. Oh, yeah, baby! It was crazy. Behind the table. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. So much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 store. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. 
When I got sent to Idaho to cover the murders of four college students, it was a story that didn't make any sense. Four students stabbed to death in their beds while two roommates were home. You gotta think to yourself, okay, who's the target and how many people would a man go through to get to his target? I'm Kana Whitworth with ABC News. This is the story of savage murders, a determined small town police force and a scholar of crime. This is The King Road Killings, a new podcast from ABC Audio. Listen now, wherever you get your podcasts. Bring, your Bring them all. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. Reporting from Chicago, I'm Alex Perez. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. to Pride Across America here on ABC News Live. We're coming to you from San Francisco. The Pride is, Pride Parade rather, is underway. And a gaggle of moms giving away free hugs just went by, Christiane. Right. Uh, so much fun going on. A great crowd out here today. Great crowd. So many personal stories. We got to speak with one person with an incredible personal story. Celebrity Grand Marshal Jake Borelli, who's also known for his role as Dr. Levi Schmidt on Grey's Anatomy, had a pretty iconic moment on the show as the first openly gay man on that show, his character at least, and then he used that as a platform to help tell his own story. Take a look. So lovely to see you. Yes, good to see you guys. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. to be here with you, the Grand Marshal. I know, right? Celebrity Grand fancy. Marshal, right? It's Amazing. so exciting. So it's been five years since your character, Dr. Levi Schmidt, came out on Grey's Anatomy, and you used that as an opportunity to come out publicly as well. What yeah. was that experience like to come out in tandem with your character? Oh, it, it was it was wild. But, um, I, you know, I had seen all the episodes up till then. I had been on the show for a year, and as a queer person who loved the show, I knew how important it would be for the queer community to see a gay male character on the show, which hadn't happened in 15 years. And so I knew when I said yes to doing that storyline that I would want to come out and, and be able to talk on a more authentic level with the queer community. When was your first Pride Parade? Do you remember? Oh my God. You know, uh, sadly, it was late. It was way later. Um, it was probably when I moved to LA and, mm. you know, I was like 19. So um, luckily I, I was invited back to Columbus, Ohio, where I'm from, to be a part of that Pride Parade a few years ago, which, wow. which felt like a big homecoming for sure. Yeah. So what does it mean today? I mean, you're going to be riding on a car at the front of this thing, frosting the cake. Like the biggest pride Huge parade deal, ever. Right? I mean, this is, it's massive. It's massive. I, I, I never would have dreamt this as a little kid. Has you, have you processed that yet? No. I think I'm going to process it on the car yeah. while I'm waving, <laughs> once I hear everybody. And, yeah. you know, every time I, like, step into a, a, a moment that is just with, like, the queer community, I'm, I'm always, like, shocked at the love and the joy. And it's, it's, I'm so excited. So your role in the show has really helped uh, with visibility which is something a lot of people have given you a lot of credit for, both in tandem with the character, for really being out there and highlighting it. We should say season 19 yes. is on Hulu right now. Renewed for Wild, 20. Over 20. Netflix, you can watch it anywhere. It's but quiet. you've it's also, crazy. I saw you gave an interview recently and you said pride is more important now perhaps than ever before. What did you mean by that? It's important now because, and then look, Grey's is on a worldwide scale too, so we're not even just talking about our country, right? And, and it's so important because around the world, there is so much legislation that is trying to push the queer community back in time and here in the country. So it's, um, 
it's it's huge to have a platform as big as Grey's, as big as Disney, really supporting the queer community and and saying it's okay, especially to you know parts of the world where it's really uh, not viewed that way. I would imagine you've heard from people who watch the show and have said thank you for being who you are all the time, all the time, and that's that's one of the the best things, the best opportunities that I've been afforded um, doing this is is the amount of people that I get to talk to, the amount of especially young people who um, you know when I was their age, how how wonderful it would have been to be able to talk to somebody who had done it before. Um, so it's been it's been great. You know, and, and something struck me thinking about this parade, this iconic parade and celebration. Uh, somebody told me, you know, for every pride, it's someone's first. Oh yeah. And you know, you talk about coming out relatively late. What would you say to somebody who's watching this who is struggling with wanting to come out and share that side of themselves publicly? To be honest, and I say this often, the hardest thing and the biggest thing that you can do is come out to yourself. And sometimes that's enough. Um, you know, there we, we are all on a different path. We all are surrounded by different types of people. And if you're feeling afraid, just I, I would take solace in the fact that that you've come out to yourself, which is the biggest and, and hardest part. What would have young Jake thought about where you are right now? Oh my gosh, I, I couldn't have even imagined it. I, I really couldn't have even imagined it. I was so afraid when I was younger and I was so worried about, um, you know, all the things that people were telling me that a queer person was. So I don't think I even had the capacity to, to know how wonderful it actually would be. And um, it's really been great. It's great to see ready. you so happy and it's great yes. to see you in the show. You've yes. been doing a great job. We love the show and uh, it's on ABC, of course, and streaming on Hulu season 19. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, such great words there from Jake. Thank you to Devin. Thank you, Christiane, for that interview. And we're going to continue this party now from San Francisco. ABC7 Bay Area reporter Jobina Fortson is along the parade route. Jobina, we saw you strutting your way yeah, down those streets. Oh, she was doing it. What's, it, what's going on now? Oh, yes. We're still doing it, Gio. I've got my clack band still in my back pocket. Spectacular to see so many different people from all walks of life come together in this one event. It's I, it's breathtaking. <laughs> you said breathtaking, Maya. You said this is your first ever Pride Parade, and that you're also a part of the community. What does it mean to see so many allies, so many community members, all in one place? It just feels amazing here, and to know that there's a like a community in the world where you can really be yourself and just be safe and be out here, and it's like celebrated and loved. It that's just beautiful. <laughs> oh, thank you, Maya. And I'm happy you're here. Francisco. And we've got the mayor coming up here, Mayor London Breed of San Francisco, doing our thing. We're having a good time. And oh, wait, I can't do the clock this way. I got us in the back. They said, oh. look of the wrist. There we go. I'm still working on it. <laughs> if it makes you. you feel better, I broke my flag having a little too much fun with it. We got to get you a new one. Here's the one. Oh, Here. no, they told me I couldn't have any more because we don't have an endless supply it, you know, of them. It'll make it look a lot easier. <laughs> oh, what a yeah, that's yeah, so good right. aggressive. Thank you, Kate Jovina. Thank you so much. We're going to be checking back in with you because it is a party there in San Francisco. Yes, and it is a party all over the country. Well, literally, yes. quite literally. It's still going on strong here in New York City. Pride across America is underway. Keep it right here on ABC News Live. But first, I'm going to pass the mic to actor and Fire Island star Tomas Matos. What's good, y'all? It's your girl Tomas Matos from Fire Island the Movie, and I'm here to tell you why Pride never stops. I make sure that Pride never stops by always supporting my LGBTQIA plus siblings, 
supporting and showing up for my trans, gender non-conforming friends and family members, and just living my life as authentically as I possibly can, because can nobody do me like I do me. I live my life pridefully. Pride is 365 days of the year. I step out my jaw with pride. I say hello to you with pride. Girl, I kiki who I live my life with pride. Pride is all shows, all shenanigans, no stops, no tea. Every day, to me, and that's on period. Whenever news breaks. The crush of families here in Poland. Here in Kentucky, no match for the tornado. From Monterey Park, California, on the ground in Ukraine. Reporting from Uvalde, Texas. NBC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. From Kathmandu, Nepal. In Truckee, California, covering record snowfall. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. Here at this airport in Tampa, it's already shut down. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Reporting from Jerusalem. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's Bring how you start your, your day, people. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lindsay Davis. We begin tonight here in Buffalo, London, in Alaska. Uvalde, Kentucky, from Poland, Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. Did you ever have a conversation about an abortion? Is she lying? Do you have a political aspiration? Absolutely. You ready for this? Go! You're going to deliver a show that will be remembered forever. Ooh, the fresh on me. You are just <laughs> a tough, bad <laughs> So much happening these days, it's hard to keep up. Things change hour by hour, minute by minute. The historic weather that's now unfolding. The worries on Wall Street. We're bringing you the right now. But a nationwide teacher shortage. The right now look at the day ahead. An alert this morning for dog owners. And the key takeaways from the biggest stories. World News Now and America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. Today does feel a little different. Early mornings on ABC News Live. You see these Apple employees parading down. This this parade here in San Francisco has been just extraordinary Hi. today. It is in full swing. I don't even think it's halfway done yet. We've got a lot more for you here on ABC News Live, Pride right Across America. We're going to toss back now to our friends here in KGO uh, in San Francisco for more of the coverage from this parade. Take a look. No, no, Mike. Come on. How do we get that? I need a phone. I need a phone. No, to the first news phone. I love the new tablet, the new... Oh Let me get all the stuff. All the, stuff. All the things. Oh, 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 oh. Happy Pride! Happy Pride! Happy Pride. Uh, 
so beautiful. There's so many of them. It's still going, you guys. It's Cupertino like, came through today. I don't see today. the end of it yet. No. <laughs> oh, this, that's how it's such a cute logo. It is really cute. Yeah. The apple with the progressive line. It is, yeah. How many Apple employees are there? Oh, oh, so you know there's a lot. Yeah, there are a lot. Sure. Yes. Oh, oh. yes. Oh. oh, yeah. Okay, we're pinwheeling. Yes. Is this truck an Apple product? Oh. I want this truck. I got it. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I just saw another thing. <laughs> you are sports. I'm sports. I know sports. Oh, I love this. It's so cute. I love it. It's so cute. They're rolling deep. Oh, hey, Bear B. Look at mm -hmm. this Bear B. Oh, I, a, a, a what? Yes, Bear B. What is, what is that? That's a Barbie and a bear. A okay. Barbie and a bear. Yeah, oh, a Bear B. Yes. Bear B. Yeah. Bear B. <laughs> He's a Bear B girl in this Bear B world. Girl in this Bear B world. <laughs> oh, my God. Hi, beauty. So good to see you. Oh, that's my friend. Hi, <laughs> No, but seriously, is that truck that they play music out of an Apple product? Because I need that truck. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm ever in a parade again, I want that truck to be following me. They had good sound fidelity. <laughs> yes. Oh, there's even yes. a wave going down here along Market Street. You are watching ABC 7's coverage of the 53rd annual SF Pride Parade. Whether you're on crutches, in a wheelchair, or walking down Market Street, you are included. And we'll be right back. Colors of pride are everywhere in the Bay Area. I'm Cornell Bernard. All right, guys, welcome back here in San Francisco. A lot going on in this uh, day of five-hour day of Pride Across <laughs> it America. It just keeps going. But, right. you know, we've had the opportunity to talk to and hear from some extraordinary members of the LGBTQ community. Right. One of them is Elliot Page, who has been a prominent figure in the entertainment industry, captivating audiences with memorable performances in movies like Juno and Inception. However, behind the persona, Elliot has faced a personal journey of self-discovery and identity. And now we want to share with you a pretty heartfelt interview that, in which the 36-year-old reflects about his new book, Page Boy, which is a memoir which details his experience uh, with gender dysphoria and the challenges he's encountered as an actor and the liberating decision to live authentically. Take a listen to some of that uh, interview. Dude, I think it's best to just tell him. I'm pregnant. Yeah, that whole Juno time, that was quite the time. I was planning on wearing jeans and a Western-ish shirt to Juno's world premiere. They said I should wear a dress and heels. I used to find it and still find it tricky to talk about, and it relates to this, your dreams are coming true, because I felt like complaining at all or feeling bad at all, just so profoundly ungrateful because it's this getting nominated for an Oscar and all those things that, how it changes your career. And it's not like someone was like forcing, you know, clothing on my physical body, but that is what it felt like, you know, to dress a certain way and be a certain way. So I put on the dresses and the makeup. I did the photo shoots. I was struggling with depression and having panic attacks so bad I would collapse. I was incapable of articulating the depth of pain I was in. I think with gender dysphoria, uh, it's, you know, being assigned a gender at birth based on your genitalia uh, and that not being the reality of who you are and the sort of incongruence and uh, disconnect with that just continues to chip away at you and chip away at you and chip away at you. and. I think it especially became complicated as an actor because people would just go, you're an actor. Like, just put on the clothes, you know? But needless to say, it was so much more than that. The discomfort, you know, that I felt really took so much of my life away from me. My 
mental en energy, physical energy, joy, that sort of controlled my life, to be honest. During the beginning of the pandemic, there was time to sit, a moment to think. I had spent years and years figuring out all the tricks to avoid my feelings, to exit my body, numb it out. But now something was simmering, preparing to bubble over. I could feel it. I was able to finally make the steps and the decision to, to be myself and to do what I wanted to do and knew I needed to do to, to live fully. And I'm feeling that joy every day. What it has allowed me is what feels like truly being alive for the first time. And it's such a powerful conversation and interview and you know, a beautiful piece of work. You can catch out the freedom to exist. It's a soul of a nation presentation on Hulu. It's streaming right now. Also, Page Boy, uh, Elliot's uh, memoir is available wherever books are sold. It's it takes so much trust to be that vulnerable. And we so appreciate him for sharing that because I would imagine that would have been so important for him to have had that kind of figure in his life growing it's up. Especially important to hear those voices right now. Absolutely. Well, stick with us. We have much more ahead on Pride Across America here on ABC News Live coming up next. This is Aura Mayari, your Filipina moon goddess, all the way from RuPaul's Drag Race season 15. And today, I'm gonna show you guys how I celebrate pride in my hometown, Nashville, Tennessee. Performing for you is my way of celebrating pride, along with some of these amazing performers who are getting ready, beautifying themselves before we hit the stage to give you guys the best pride entertainment that you deserve. So remember, we are putting ourselves out there to make sure that you know that you are perfect perfectly perfect the way you are. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. From America's number one news comes the all new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience the all new ABC News app. Download it now. This is ABC News Live Prime. Thanks so much for streaming with us. Live reporting, breaking news, exclusives, award winning, powerful, eye opening. ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Streaming weeknights. Amanda Lemmett. Lola Ken. Xander Pump Rules. Outrageous. Devastating. Insane. Heartbreaking. Lawsuits. I have to put up a big fight. The Randall Scandal. Love, Loathing, and Vanderpump. Only on Hulu. My son has been missing since March of 2021. I haven't seen or heard from my sons. The kids were gone. It was horrifying. I have no idea if he's alive. Warren thinks he's God, and they think he's God. I want to make this very clear. If the law officials, FBI, doesn't stop Warren, thousands will die. Impact by Nightline, now streaming on Hulu. I came out of jail with a plan. I was going to put every piece of energy I had into music. Give it up for Jelly Roll! If I wasn't a musician, I'd be dead.
This was my best bet to really have an impact. <laughs> I'll cry with you. Who would have thought I could help people? I needed help, you know? I still need help. Somebody save me. I love you. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. I'm Rebecca Jarvis reporting from the New York Stock Exchange, and wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. And welcome back to Pride Across America, that gorgeous live shot there of New York City. And we have just been having such a blast here in New York, haven't we? Murray, what's been your favorite part? All right, I'm going to tell you, I'm a little bit emo, okay. everybody. Okay. My favorite point, maybe my favorite part, I'm so excited, is seeing so much joy and happiness, and you know, we should rename it, it shouldn't be pride across America. It should be love across America, because I am feeling the love. I got goosebumps, look at this. Oh, oh yeah. I know, I know. I, I saw you getting emotional earlier, and, and it was pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing what has happened on these streets here in New York City. What about you? I'm gonna go with the Caribbean equality. You were uh, so blown away yeah. by that. Completely blown away to see Jamaican flags, Dominican, PR, representing all the queer people of color. Like, when I first came out, we could see each other. It wasn't a lot of people of color at parades in the 90s, right? And to see just this long stream of browns and fluorescent beige to quote T.S. Madison and just the whole litany of colors has just been wonderful to see. And they brought the music. Oh, yes, they did. Yeah. They really brought music. the music. What's your favorite part, Ben? You yes. know, I, I was really moved. I really was moved by Sage. I was moved yep. by that group of the LGBTQ elderly folks who were out there in the wheelchairs rolling down these streets. I thought that was very, very powerful. What about you, Eva? You know, I think it's when you look at the parade as it marches by, it's all kinds of different people, all different ages, all different races, all different types of people out there, and they're all here supporting each other. And there's something really wonderful about just that feeling of, here we are, yep, and yep. everyone's happy to be here. That collective and, love. And can we give a shout out to the NBA? You know, Commissioner Adam Silver's here. He's going to be on the float. We've seen what's happened with the Dodgers in Major League Baseball. We heard the unfortunate news out of the NHL. But it's good to see a sports league like the NBA still says, we're here, we're still supporting you. I know Jason Collins, the first openly queer player in the NBA, is on the float as well, as well as the referee, the first openly gay referee. It's just wonderful, wonderful to see a sports league and its commissioner still rock with us. Like and you know what, LZ? You're not going to believe this, but the Mets organization, they are so supportive of the gay rights movement. I was over there on Gay Pride. I met Mr. Met and I met Jason Collins. Oh, fantastic. So it's oh. great to have the New York sports team. Today. Even guys like me, we like sports. You don't have to be straight just to like sports. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Two, I know two, you don't watch them, but still. <laughs> two bookends here. Two bookends. Thank you so much. Let's check in with Alex Perez because the party, oh, it is still going on over there in Chicago, my friend. <laughs> Yeah, hey Gio, uh, Eva and everyone else in New York, the party is still going on. Ginger may have left me, but do not fret because I am not alone. In fact, I got about a million of my closest friends who have come out for the parade here today. You know, it's the 52nd annual parade here in Chicago. Parade here in Chicago started one summer after the riots at Stonewall. So there is a long tradition of this Pride March here in Chicago. And you guys, I mentioned this earlier, but I have to mention it again. One of the things I always think about when I'm here at this parade is the very first time I came to the Pride Parade here in Chicago. And it was almost two decades ago, and I was still closeted 
and I knew I wanted to come and experience some of what I was seeing and hearing about, and so I made my way here from the other side of town where I used to live, and it was everything I could have ever dreamed for, dreamed of. For the first time, I felt in that moment that I could be myself, and you know what? There were other people just like me. And as I look around the crowd today, and I see everyone, and I see people jumping for joy and unable to sit still because there's so much music all the time, I'm sort of feeling that same sense of energy, and I think that's what it's all about, guys. It's about trying and finding a place to be yourself. Guys. Absolutely. Thank you, Alex. And it is just so cool that we are seeing this all play out in New York, Chicago, and San Francisco, all happening at the same time in all of these major cities across America. Although I, I do need to mention the fact that Alex seems to think that Chicago has the best pride. <laughs> yes, she does. Well, as a veteran of Chicago Pride <laughs> oh. and of New York Pride and a few others, I won't get too much of my business. <laughs> uh, I'll say Chicago is certainly in the top five, but I can't put it over New York. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. But let's get a glass a little flavor of what's going okay. on. Let's head to San Francisco because we hear California also knows how to party. Hey, guys. <laughs> I feel like we all have something party? to say about what our pride individually means to us. And I mean, the San Franciscans probably would think that we have the best pride I here. mean, they do. I mean, they've been rocking it out today, guys. We're so glad to have everybody with us, by the way. And you know, as we focus on pride across America, about the pride celebrations in New York, Chicago, San Francisco, you know, this is really a global event. This city in particular has been a haven uh, and a beacon for, for communities all around the world. And we got to, uh, to talk earlier today to someone who is an icon in the Middle East, Dr. Naz Muhammad. He's a physician and someone uh, who is an asylum seeker to the United States, a new U.S. citizen. He is one of the Grand Marshals today, uh, and he identifies as the first Qatari yeah. person to go public uh, as a gay individual. Just an incredible story. And so we had an opportunity to speak with both him and also Natalie Thompson, who's the co-president of Inner Pride. Here's what they had to say. Natalie Thompson, Dr. Naz Mohammed, so lovely to see you both. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. I'm loving the look. Right. I know. Tell us a little bit about it. So this is really activism through fashion mm -hmm. moment. So and it's playing um, with the theme of Pride this year, looking back and moving forward. And I'm telling my own story in my outfit today. I immigrated to the United States. Um, I came here as a student. I went to medical school and then filed for asylum to stay. I am now an American citizen and San Franciscan. Congratulations. And I'm an LGBT rights activist. And I'm just out to yeah. tell a story. This in year. Arabic, this says? This says love is not a crime in Arabic. Al-hub laysa jarima. It's powerful. When you talk about visibility, that is so powerful. Yeah. And, and, and that's part of the campaign. You know, you identify as the first Qatari person to come out publicly in a country that's denied the existence of LGBTQ people, mm -hmm. so powerful, and that slogan is your mission. How are you fighting the criminalization of love? I'm fighting with visibility, because that is the thing that they're doing to us. Because when you criminalize a segment of humans, what you do is that you create a black market where a lot of abuse happens. And that's what has, what's happening to a lot of people in so many parts of the world that are suffering in silence. <clears throat> so what I'm doing here is I'm coming out and saying that the, ir the irrational criminalization of the um, sexual and genderly diverse population needs to stop. We can have conversations, we can have dialogues, we can engage, but criminalizing people and persecuting them for things that are absolutely out of their control is something that needs to stop, and that's my main... You've, talk, you've talked about that as, in your words, ending the cycle of denial around LGBTQ people. Absolutely. And it's like really showing that the diversity exists in all cultures and traditions. Right. And to that point, Natalie, I mean, you know better than most people as the co-president of Inner Pride that this does exist, not just in Qatar. Yeah, it exists everywhere. And I think as we talk about criminalization, we also have to talk about the socialization. So it could be legal, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's safe for everybody. We have to have social change and social justice for folks around the world. So when you talk about criminalization, we also need to remember that you can change a law, but that doesn't necessarily change people's hearts. And so that's why visibility is important. That's why getting connected to folks is important. And that's why pride is extremely important, because this is about community and this is about 
folks finding their resources, finding their love, and folks being able to have these types of conversations to understand around the world this is an issue for all of us. We are a global community. 62 countries still criminalize LGBTQ people, which is sort of extraordinary. Yeah. Um, your work as co-president of Interpride takes on some of that. Talk a little bit about what you do uh, on the global level as an organization. Yeah, on the global level, so we are a membership organization, and so we work with a lot of pride organizations around the world. We have over 375 organizations in 70 countries that we work with, and we have conversations around what's happening in the world. We also provide humanitarian funds so that folks who are in need of resources, folks who are in need of shelter, folks who are in need of clothes, food, resources, we want to make sure that we are providing these resources. We also have an annual meeting where we meet to talk about best practices. And, and a we big look party. At, you know, we do have parties. You got World Pride. <laughs> you got you World think? Pride coming up. And before we kick, we just got to give a little plug because I'm from D.C. You're from D.C. Yeah, there you go. Coming up 2025. Coming to D.C. Are you going to be there? Yes. 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 All right. So we'll see you for the Interpride World Pride in Washington, D.C. Yeah. in two years' time. Being Guys, sponsored by thank you so much. Alliance. We look forward to yeah. that. Thank you both. Yes, thank, thank you for having us. And our thanks, to, our thanks to Natalie Thompson and to Dr. Nas Muhammad for that fascinating conversation. And, uh, what do you think? Should we do this again? World Pride DC 2025? So. Yeah, DC 2025. We have time to plan uh, that, right? A five-hour long special. And we're glad you're with us. There's a much more ahead here on ABC News Live. Pride across America. We're coming back right after this. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. I came out of jail with a plan. I was going to put every piece of energy I had into music. Give it up for Jelly Roll! If I wasn't a musician, I'd be dead. This was my best bet to really have an impact. <laughs> I'll cry with you. Who would have thought I could help people? I needed help, you know? I still need help. Somebody say me. I love you. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 2 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. You never know what you're going to get on this show. That's all I'm going to tell you. Yes, Whoopi! This mic on? Can you hear me out there? Behind the scenes is always a better show. Absolutely. 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 That's what people don't see during the commercial breaks. Right. They don't. What happened? I had no idea really what I was getting myself into. That day that we walked out, I, I treasured that day. I just, I couldn't sit there. You're doing good, Joy. You're doing good. Oh, yeah, baby. It was crazy. Behind the table. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The ultimate game of deception is back. Welcome to Claim to Fame. Season 10! 12 A-lister relatives will compete to keep their famous family a secret. I'm coming for all of you. I'm lying about everything. You can't trust anybody here. Can you guess who's related to who? I think he's related to Janet Jackson, Harrison Ford, Gal Gadot, and Hathaway. Your celebrity relative is... 
She's screaming, she's screaming, she's screaming. Playing to Fame premieres June 26th on ABC and stream on Hulu. Every time that song comes on, we just got to dance. It's been an incredible five hours here sharing love and light with you right here on ABC News Live. And before we go, we do want everyone to sort of leave us with a word describing how you felt today. So why don't we go ahead and start out in San Francisco. Devin and Christian, what is your word? Do you have a word? Hey, hey, you know, it's resilience. This community has been through so much, and yet they persist, and they shine, and they brought it today. I think mine is hope. I actually spoke a few days ago with a trans woman. I asked her what brings her hope right now. She actually said, this moment of disruption gives me hope because it means we're not complacent. We're going to come out on the other side of this much stronger. Oh, I love that. Alex, what about you in Chicago? Yeah, Gio, mine is more sort of a phrase. You are worth it. What we did today was amazing. We brought pride to so many homes, to so many places where they need to feel that love. And I hope they walk away remembering that phrase. You are worth it. That's my phrase, Gio. Oh, I absolutely love that. Absolutely love that. LZ, what about you? My word is blessed. Mm. You know, a lot of people like to make God political. I think God is for everyone. And so today I look out and I see all these happy faces in love and I feel blessed. Oh, I love that. Murray? Watch that hand. <laughs> <laughs> My word today is joy. Joy, joy, joy. You know, we can't believe all the negative, you know, attention that's going on. We gotta feel the joy because it's out there and we saw it today. Oh, absolutely. Eva? Love. I love. feel like yes. he has felt so much love today. You know, I broke my fan earlier. Elsie <laughs> gave me his. <laughs> it's a sacrifice. <laughs> yes, but love. You just the love is. Yep. You feel it in the air here. Yeah, absolutely. And my word, gratitude. Gratitude yep. for all of you. Gratitude Aww. for all of our viewers who have spent so much time with us watching and seeing this play out across the country. Oh, did I just say? <laughs> <laughs> I never Hold on. The I'm fragile. Yeah. I'm there fragile. We there we go. Everything's breaking around, Eva. Uh, but gratitude, really gratitude for, for all of this and for all the people who showed up here in New York City. Look at this. Still going on strong. There's and the NBA behind it. Oh, hey, 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 hey. There they are. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> you know, it takes so many people to put on events yeah. like this that we've seen all across the country. We have to thank our partners at WABC, WLS, KGO, and Hulu for helping us bring you pride across America. Yep, absolutely. Oh, so, something's <laughs> like, been thrown at us. Here we go, here we go. We hope oh, you enjoyed it. It's this. a better towel. What is this? <laughs> oh, there, there we go. go. All right. We needed that towel we got like the an NBA hour towel. Ago. Hey, I want that. I want that. <laughs> We so hope you enjoyed this unprecedented five-hour marathon here on ABC News Live. All right, we are exhausted, and I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart and all of them, we love you, we see you, and we accept you. Gio, take it away. On behalf of everyone here at ABC News Live, here in New York and around the world, happy Pride. Woo! Card here at the NYC 2023 Pride, Pride Mart, continuing their long-standing support of the LG. Reporting from Monterey Park, California, I'm...